Uh, I was just looking at the uh, the last time we did this, and it was uh, August of last year, I believe. Can you believe it? Years been? I know, I know. Huh. And I did, uh, and I did say post at the end of that conversation that we need to do a part two very quickly, and I'll get it sorted. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a year later, here we are. Yes, yes. Time catches up with itself. <laughs> So, what do you what do you want to what do you want to talk about? Well, I was thinking. There we go. I was thinking. Um, general, get general chit chat, catch up. Sure. And um, obviously, I think it's an important time at the moment. So, for your neck of the woods, <laughs> yeah. three hundred odd days left. <laughs> we we did speak a, a little bit more about the the, the politics side of it as well. Yes, yeah. That last time. It is- that, I mean, that's what everyone's going to be, whether they know it or not, that's what everyone's going to be focusing on here pretty soon, because all the all the rest of the stuff is not happening. Meaning mm. um, if you the all the you know, I like to put myself in the other people's shoes and the the great reset that that people have been waiting for. Yes, it's not happening. It's, I mean, yeah, you, we, we, you know, the mandates have been rolled back. Uh, you know, we tried to start something in Taiwan. China didn't go for it. You know, we tried to st- start something. We're still trying to do something in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Russia is way too cagey. They're not going for it. So we, whether anyone agrees or not, we orchestrated that whole thing, you know, in the Middle East right now. Yes. And along with Britain, along with Britain. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Britain, Britain is absolutely, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me put back up for a second. The SAS has been with us the whole time. Yes. They are, they are complicit in everything. SAS, if you're listening, you know what. You know what you're up to. We give you all sorts of fun things to do, uh, and and you enjoy doing them. Uh, well, not as much as we do, but but you enjoy doing them. Um, and really, the the pivotal moment, which I talked about in a show um, not too long ago, was when um, Israel started going in. You know, starting to turn the the Gaza Strip into a parking lot. Yeah. I thought for sure it's like, well, here's the big chance. All the Middle Eastern countries that that have a beef, they're they're gonna jump in. Mm-hmm. And I did a little thing, and I know you probably didn't listen to it, where it's like, okay, what well, you know, Iran's ready to go, Lebanon's ready, to, every everybody's ready to go over there. They're, they're, let's you know, let's let's dogpile on on Israel. And then all of a sudden I realized as I was looking at the the military side of things, which is uh uh, it, there was a, a thing I, I covered called carrier groups, if you know what a carrier group is, which is it's an aircraft carrier surrounded by a bunch of ships. You know, aircraft carriers don't go by. Yes. Anymore. Yes. Right? So there's a whole bunch of ships that are that support the aircraft carrier. And there are only 21 carrier groups in the world. And they're only controlled by six countries. Britain has two. France has two. Russia has two. China has two. Uh, and Italy has two. Right. You know how many we have? We have 11. Wow. <laughs> we have more, and that's deliberate, right? We have more than the rest of the world combined. And and half of those those groups, or more than half of those groups, were our friends to begin with. Mm. And they're a very, very scary thing, a carrier group. You know, it's a, it's a portable air base that you can set up anywhere off the beach and, and just hammer anything you want. And I ran, I'm sure what happened was, because Iran was supposed to give this big speech. And they were supposed to, you know, they were going to call out everybody. It's like, oh, okay, everybody, let's go attack Israel, you know. And if you're in other countries, let's make these protests violent. So, you know, let's let's start lighting things on fire. And I'm pretty sure that Russia called them, you know, because Russia and Iran are, are tight. And they uh, and they said, yeah, don't go for it. I'm sorry, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna lose the strip, right? Mm-hmm. The, the Gaza Strip is lost. But it's better than the alternative because once Iran jumps in or would have jumped in. America would have jumped in yes. and then the whole thing turns into nightmare and, and, and Russia's get, they've done everything they could to not go for it. Uh, they're playing the, the very, it's, it's frustrating because if you believe in, you know, stage plays, you're from the land of thespians, <laughs> uh, right? The, the villain is supposed to play his role yeah. and Russia's not doing it. They're, they're again, they're, they're like, nah, we've done the numbers. <laughs> we don't want to, we don't want to do this. It's we don't want to. The script has now changed. You know, yeah. 
It's yeah. like we're almost working off the 1970s all the way up to the, the, the 1990s sort of villainous script of sorts. And it's all right. flipped on its head now. Right. Yeah. And, and now this the script, nobody's nobody's going for it. I mean, China disappointed me to no end. It's like, look, China owns Taiwan. For anyone that, that is listening that doesn't realize this, it, China, China absolutely owns Taiwan. And we've been posturing, but we do a lot of business in Taiwan. And therefore, we kind of treat them like a separate country. They're not. Yeah, no. They're absolutely not. And they can go in there. China can go in at any time and take it over. And so, you know, we we started posturing. Oh, you know, we're we're thinking about, you know, expanding our military, putting some more stuff there. And and China's like, don't you do it. We'll we'll take steps. And they didn't do anything. <laughs> and so, it's, yeah. Yeah. So nobody, the point is nobody's doing anything and so now the only thing that anyone's going to focus on let's segue right into it um is the um is the the american election that yes. which is which is which is fascinating in that there is a subplot that that maybe you know or maybe you don't uh that you know of course joe biden nobody on our our in our circles thought that joe biden was going to live this right long now. right not He's at all He's propped up. He hasn't fallen literally on his face on stage. Could he be a clone? I don't know. Who, who knows? But he's just, yeah. uh, he's literally a puppet. He's a marionette being just led around. Uh -huh. And and people don't even like talking to him. I mean, it's really sad when you see him, like, when, when the microphones are turned off. People don't even want to talk to him. Yeah. Because, you know, you're not talking to anybody. He's, he's oh, lost. No. He has not... You know, he's just turned, I think, 81. Which, again, I know some sharp 81-year-olds. Exactly. He's not... He's not one of them. Mm. So it's a terrible, it's a terrible representation um, visually. But this this falls in line with the the scripts, the scripts which has been flipped on its head that the superpower, the the, the land of the heat the, of the free, yeah. the brave, and all the rest of it. Yep. Like you have a powerful president up there who can articulate himself. You know who is yep. that symbol of power? You yep. don't have that anymore. And and no. for some people, it's like, what's going on here? But for others, it's oh, like, oh, well, it, it, it's it, signed at the times, Mark. And that should, and you're, and you're right. That should be the case, which is you make America look as weak as humanly possible, which they have done. We, you know, they our president. It, I've never seen a president look weaker than mm. than this guy. I seriously, and I know a lot about presidents. This guy takes the cake. I mean, he is deliberately meant to look inept. And, yeah. and just this doddering old old fool. And then um, you've got the country divided. You know, red team hates blue team over here. Um, mm. You've got gender issues. You've yeah. got you've got all sorts of protests. And I mean, the, the country could not be more divided. Yes. However, that does not negate the fact that we have spent enormous amounts of money on military spending. Um, you know, on on military budgets and and the, and those tools, those things are still out there. And so even though there are countries, the, the, the analogy I tried to give was that um, we're kind of like the, the big drunk bully in the parking lot of the bar or the pub mm. after, after closing, right? And, you know, he kind of kind of teetering and everyone wants to take a shot at him, right? But this guy is covered from head to toe in weaponry. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's he's like blind drunk, his chin's out, he can barely keep his eyes open, but he's got like knives and guns and grenades strapped to him, right? And you realize it's like, yeah, you might be able to get a shot in, but if you don't take him out instantly, yeah. it's over. It, you're mm -hmm. you are you are done. There's a high degree of probability that you and all your friends next to you are going down permanently. And so um that's that's the problem. I, I call it the um the scary America pro problem, not to be convinced with the or, or confused with the uh, David Bowie song, I'm Afraid of America, <laughs> which is very true. <laughs> yes. And, I like as that America's, as, as weird and as screwed up as America is, they are still holding a lot of very dangerous things that nobody and, and come on, I, I don't want to drag this out too much. But there's there's something else that, that people keep forgetting is, do you really want to go after a country that has a place called Area 51. Really? <laughs> you don't you don't know what's in there. <laughs> you don't you want to find out. You want to roll in there. You want to I mean that's one of those science fiction movies where you just roll in with your forces right into Nevada and all of a sudden like they open up these hangars and like these giant flying krakens come out <laughs> or or 
or, or, or ships, you know, giant or giant alien ships or whatever it is, whatever it is, it's not going to be fun. And you've never seen it before because we've never seen it before. Exactly. And yeah, it's yeah, it's not good. Okay, so let me let me talk about the election for a bit. So. So here's the subplot in the election. So everybody knows um, right now it's just it's just straight up uh, um, uh, preface theater. Uh, everybody knows that Trump's going to be the candidate. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter what he's being accused of. The the trial at this point, you're never going to get a conviction before the election kicks off. And if you become if he became president, he just Pardon. all the all that legal stuff, the, the legal stuff that's happening to him is just to slow the campaign down. That's it. But you're, all you're doing is giving him an excuse not to go to all the states and campaign. He'll be like, eh, I'm sorry, I'm in court. You know, he'll just campaign from the courthouse steps. It'll be free press and every camera in the world will be talking to him. International mm -hmm. things will fly here to New York and they will, while he's in court, they'll just talk to him on the steps. Every, every yes. you know, it'll be a courthouse campaign, um, which I don't think has really ever been done. But the here's where it gets weird. The blue team... There's a there's a something happening in the wings. And honestly, four years ago, I would have said you were crazy for even suggesting it. But it is that before this thing gets too far, they will not endorse Biden and Kamala as, you know, for running again for reelection. They will endorse Michelle Obama. Michelle, I've been saying this for a while. Yep. Uh, and and Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, and we don't know who would be who. Uh, you know, would Gavin be VP? Would yeah. would Shell be VP? But it doesn't really matter. And the 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 genius of it is that if you will get Michelle in there, you get Barack back in. Exactly. As as and it doesn't matter. It's like, well, you know, he's not. He wouldn't be president. It wouldn't matter. The optics meaning he's going to be on camera. And yeah. subliminally, he will be the, the 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 Democratic Party will be restored to its former glory. Former I guess former glory, exactly. But, but, but people, but Mark, people are saying that currently Obama. Yeah. Well, what 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 does um Mr. Jones say? The Ob Obama or Biden administration. So right. he's 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 posturing, posturing and positioning that. Obama's actually winning the whole of this, not 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 Biden, not you know, he's he's just a the quote unquote figurehead. Right. Well, okay. There I, I have an opinion on, on that, and I have to look this up really fast. So um uh, yes, I've heard the rumors that uh, yes, Obama is is pulling the strings. However, it's Obama's people that would be pulling the strings. Indeed. Uh, Obama himself, again, is just a figurehead. He is just yeah. the on-air talent. Um mm. he was Initially, there's a wonderful story, and I'm seeing if I can find here. Uh, oh, come on. Find me. Find me who the freaking actor was. There was a all cast and crew. One second. Oh, are we going into where, the, where he said that he stole everything from him? He, oh, you mean the actor? Yeah, the actor was saying. Well, well yeah, yeah. There was an actor, and I, of course, I'm not going to get the name right. General, yeah, Harry Lennox. That's what, that was his name. So there's an actor. So what happened was the there's a the there's an actor that, who gets a lot of roles right now, a black actor named Harry Lennox and L E N N I X, and he was most notable for the um, uh, playing the general in uh, the new Superman movies with Henry Cavill, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was being interviewed in some radio station, and said they were talking about Obama, you know how great Obama was, and Henry apparently couldn't, or sorry, Harry couldn't couldn't take it anymore and so he he's like look when you're talking to obama you're basically talking to me i was his acting coach i was the one that gave him you know how to what you know the the tips on what to do on camera i was the one that helped develop his persona it was mm. directly tied to me and of course, you know, there were people listening to the radio, you know, the other journalists, you know, headed down to the station and, you know, try to get some clarification. And by then someone had already gotten to him and, and, and he backpedaled pretty quick and he didn't want to talk about it. I don't think he's ever talked about it since mm. because that would have been part of a government program. However, however, you are right in that I think it's Obama's people that are um, 
uh, running running the Biden campaign. You know, and, and there's an illusion out there, and it's been an illusion with the American presidents ever since Eisenhower, which is you know the, the you've heard of like the nuclear football. Yes. things it's like well oh no you know the president at any given time could you know open up the briefcase and hit the shiny red button it's like mm -hmm. no no mm -hmm. no it's it's that we 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 put that out there in movies and television yes. the, the president is literally a compilation of a group of people he is he is up he, he's basically his own press secretary he's his own front man for a for a consortium of people but people yes. personify him as like, oh no, he, you know, he's the leader of the free world. No, he's not. It's his people mm -hmm. that are the leader of the free. His 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 staff, his producers, no different than I mean, you you you've been in the you know you you know about producers. I yes. mean, producers. <laughs> the bigger the operation is, the more power the producers have, and yes. and the less power that the the on air talent has to where exactly. when you get up to a certain level the on air talent has no really no say at all oh and they might have a little bit of leverage here and there it's like i'll quit the show it's like fine it'll take us a year to replace you but we can replace you yeah producers you know they're the they're the ones that run everything sorry backtrack a little bit um michelle obama yeah that's what i think they're gonna do they're gonna sneak in michelle and, and gavin to replace Joe Biden and Kamala, and the and the reason I say this, and and uh, then we can move on to whatever you, you want, which is the reason I the the reason why I think this is going to happen is when this conspiracy came out, the media, which is blue team basically over here, you know the Democrats basically run the media, um, they didn't go after it, meaning it, it was an easy target. It's like here's the th stupid stuff Republicans thinking of now. Look at this yeah. conspiracy, right? Mm. It, the reason why they didn't go after it is because, come on, let's face it, from blue team standpoint, it's a good idea. It yeah. works. You've got, even though Michelle has nothing to do with politics <laughs> at all, nothing, absolutely, mm. for, at least Hillary Clinton served, right? Yeah. She did the time. Michelle Obama, and we won't even get into the whole, <laughs> all right. Big Mike thing well, that people yeah, are throwing yeah, around. So a quick reminder, Joan Rivers, rest in peace, yeah. <laughs> right? Joan Rivers, if anyone forgot about this, if you get, because this was, this was a while ago, you know, Joan Rivers, this is, this is getting way back in the rearview mirror now, which was Joan Rivers, which was asked, you know, I think it was TMZ. They caught her when she was going one of her routine facelifts, you know, <laughs> I mean, like one every two weeks or something like that. And I mean, she looked good for being 180 yes. years old, but but she was going in and she was already on her pre-meds. She she had gotten down to a science to where she took the pre-meds before she even walked in. So yeah. she was half stoned walking in. And they said, and I quote, you know, they asked her, it's like, do you ever think we'll have a gay president? Right. And she couldn't help herself. She's in, you know, she's sharp. She's going, we already have one with, you know, with Obama. Yeah. Right? She goes, it's no big deal. Just settle down. Right. And then she walks up the steps and yep. she couldn't help herself, right? And she turns back around. And you know this, but I'm, I'm doing this for your listeners. She turns back around and she goes, she goes, and, you know, and his wife's, you know, a, a, a tranny, right? It's no big deal. And, and, of course, this was back some years ago yeah. when nobody, you know, the, the trans term wasn't even a thing, right? And, and he goes, what do you mean? She goes, he goes, she goes, transgender. She goes, it's all right. Everybody knows it's no big deal. And she never took it back. And that is mm. the number one rule of comedians when you're talking about politicians. You can't, you, you, you want to make it into a joke, you make it into a joke. But if you drop a serious knowledge bomb like that out there, <laughs> don't pull it back. And that was it. She, she died on the operating table. Yep. And you know, she never left that building. And Wait, uh, was that the, is that the case? And that actual was the last. Yeah, that was it. It was over. That was the last time anyone talked to her. And it, and to be fair, if I was working for you know a, an alphabet group and I had yes. heard it, the the it's a fairly short meeting, which is you know people aren't going to let this go. She's gonna there's going to be follow up questions and she's going to be mm -hmm. asked about this a lot. It's only going to be a matter of time. And so it's like, well, wow. she goes. You know, let's 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 take care of this. I mean, it's it's sobering, but at the same time, it also sent a message to anybody else that was out there Indeed. that was thinking, that, was, that was thinking of doing it. Fat, fast Mark, forward. Mark, Sorry, I had no idea. I had no idea it was that close. I knew she died on the operating table, but I didn't know yeah. it was post that that interaction. 
Yeah, nobody. That, that was it. And and of course, you'd have to do that because you you'd want to um, protect. Uh, yeah, you, you want you don't want follow up questions. You can't. Mm. You can't have follow up because you don't want some people, you know, but throwing a, a microphone in her face, uh, you know, every every chance because eventually she's going to get stoned again or drunk or whatever. And and they're going to do it. Fast forward to 2023, which was interesting. You know, now that we've got AI artwork out there, and AI is a whole other thing, which I don't want. To, the AI is self awareness doesn't exist. Terminators are never going to exist. We're never going to solve the power problem, and AI doesn't exist. Truly self aware, because we we don't know how to even begin to code it. I come from the programming world. I can tell you right now, the flow charts don't exist. I can't even imagine what the flow chart would even start out like. Mm. But Point is, is that AI artwork came out and somebody posted very clever because somebody that this was where I'm kind of getting to the rumor of Michelle running, because once the rumor started going out there that she was going to run, the somebody posted some fake AI artwork of her pregnant, you know, back when, you know, when she was with Barack years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. Point was is like the fake AI artwork got circulated around and then people were like, wait a minute. Why are there no real shots of her pregnant? And there and there aren't <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> the closest you get is her pushing a stroller, and that's good enough for most people. It's like, well, she's pushing a stroller. It's like, yeah, but pregnant women get photographs taken of all the, all the time, and especially if you're a politician's wife. Yes. You know, it's it's the whole you want those shots <clears throat> for the for the marketing for the media. To enrich the 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 the, um, the idea and view of the the wholesome family. Look, the the president's wife. She's pregnant. She's with child, and now she's yeah. gonna give birth. Yeah, exactly. And those never those never were out there. Now, granted, it was some years ago. You know, her kids are or the kids are twenty in their early twenties at at this point. But uh, and then of course the um also simultaneously this year uh the the guy that supposedly did um. <laughs> did did crack with Obama was and um, was having sex with him in a limousine. Uh, he he resurfaced again this year, and again wow. that's the oh, yeah no red team's taking this very seriously. They're like anything we can to put any sort of doubt in blue team voters. We're gonna do it. You know the, the it's not like either side is innocent in in their tricks they're gonna play here. So do you think they're gonna come they're gonna bring out the the um the tinfoil hat style stuff reference the to the the wife and husband I can't remember their names the mother the one of them's light skinned of sorts and the other one's a little bit darker and they're always with the pres um Obama and Michelle and oh, apparently they <clears throat> that's their children, and they're, they're, that's actually their birth children, and they're being passed off as as the Obama's children. So the the conspiracy is that they they might try to push that a little bit out there. I mean, the the you remember their cook, their their personal chef died recently. Yeah, uh, up there under suspicious circumstances. And again, if you're when you if you're an ex president, you can get away with a lot of stuff. So we don't we don't know what's going on there. Um, but it is going to be let, let's get into the, the end game of this election, which is I firmly believe that. And I don't I don't know how I because I think there was again, there was supposed to be some sort of war going on and a pandemic. And this election thing was supposed to turn into a nightmare because it's not going to be a rematch. You know, it's not going to be um, uh, uh, Trump versus Biden. It's yeah. going to be Trump versus probably, you know, Obama's again. And or Trump versus Obama's with um, uh, with Gavin Newsom is a thing. But do I think, you know, the red team is convinced it's like, oh, no, no, you know, Trump can't lose this time. It's like, really? Because that's exactly what they would want you to think. Because remember, mm -hmm. he had it in the bag the last time. Yeah. So even though red team's convinced, so, oh, no, if, you know, Trump gets the, you know, the nomination, he's going to win. It's like, really? Let me I'm, I'm willing to bet that the red team isn't going to sleep that night. Because when they went to bed the last time, four years, you know, coming up on four years ago, <clears throat> when they, you know, over here, because you guys were, were long asleep or, or you were just getting up. <laughs> yes, getting when up, yeah. we woke up here, you know, we went to bed. It's like, oh, yeah, it's in the bag. We got him. It's over. Well, you wake up. It's like, oh, no, you lost <sighs> handily. Yeah. It's like, what? How? Ow. How, Ow. How, how the hell did it happen? <laughs> so if you don't think that they would try to pull that again, <clears throat> you are kidding yourself. Um, the, of course the, the red states have, have put in 
procedures to where they 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 lock down the voting process. But that's red states, right? It's the swing states which you don't know. And so I you know, I I do I do I so let, let me take it out one step further, which is if you had to pick again a, a situation where America is more divided than you have to have red team lose again because red team at least has the ability to to protest and yeah threaten secession you know to where red states will start bundling up together and not doing business with blue states and and crap like that um because if blue state if blue loses right and trump becomes president again oh yeah it'll be insane either way you can work with it i mean you know if if trump wins yeah there'd be protests in the streets but to what end Right. Mm. You know, at that point, you, you you could use your power, you know, as as president to quash those protests pretty brutally if you if you wanted so. But no, I, I, I think the to make the America look weaker, you've got to have red team lose again, which again, red team. I know Republicans that would lose their freaking minds if, <laughs> if, if he lost. again. <laughs> and, and you got to blame you got to blame somebody. And then then yes. what? But remember the, the capital insurrection issue. Where well, uh, well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mark. I'm yeah. glad you mentioned that because it it just the whole thing didn't sit, and I'm sure we briefly touched on this last time. The whole thing just didn't sit right with me. And then now the after effects, like number one, it just seemed like it, it potentially. I, I don't know. It just seemed like okay, there was very minimal police there and stuff. It just seemed right. to me that the whole thing on the police's part was staged like okay yeah you're gonna pro oh you want to enter the building as the video it's uh footage has shown the police were letting the guys in you know there were a bit of to and fro in and the barricades and that kind of stuff but oh dude just... you you never saw you never saw the the detailed breakdown did you oh i i gotta send that to you as soon as we're done i'm gonna where where the, the forget, a, forget the about forget about thing what yeah where they who he where he was focused on the one room where the girl got taken out? Yes, I've seen it. I have oh, you have that. seen that? I, yes. I'm sorry. I'm a huge believer in because again, he 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 made some wonderful points where at towards the end where it's like if you turn the sound off, is there's amazingly little happening there. Yeah. It's all you know the you 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 know the old saying sound and fury signifying nothing. Mm. Um, that's what we were kind of looking at. Plus, of course, look, I, I, I know protests. I know demographics. It was just like, you're telling me in a room full of guys, right? All guys, this little girl, yeah. she was the first one. She was one that charged the barricade. I'm, She's the yeah. first one through that window. And yeah. a single, again, a single shot is fired by a guy off camp, you know, out of, out of frame. Of course, we figured out who he was later. And then. And that was it. And and then you know they they ship her off. And it's like no, no. The you're yes, you're absolutely right. It was it was not what it appeared to be, and uh, but it, it was very effective in rounding up a whole bunch of people. Exactly. <laughs> this is the other side, sweet Mark. So as you say, it it was it was staged. It was definitely yeah. staged. People were like, this doesn't feel right it doesn't sound right and then later we're seeing all of the other e information and evidence video footage being being released statements being made and then people actually breaking this stuff down yeah. and then we owen schroeder's in in the in the penitentiary mark oh, yeah. oh people Ooh. people did serious time for this yeah and it basically turned into a giant mousetrap Mm. Where where people were anyone that was caught. I mean, if you were caught, if your face was on camera yeah. anywhere inside the property, you did time. They found you. And of course, let the other part of how they found you was, which part they're not going to talk about is everybody brought their freaking phones. Exactly. They, they knew you were there. They knew it's like, <laughs> oh no. Yeah, they they pinged everybody. They knew exactly where you were. They you know how many minutes and seconds you were in every any given zone. And if as long as you were outside, they didn't worry about it. anyone was inside. Immediately got uh, got tracked, and they they found everybody. And of course, you know you can't tell them that you know. But it's 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 weird. We we're in denial, Americans especially, about how much how much tracking there is and how much surveillance there is. Yes. You know, you, you, you've heard the, the, the running jokes. It's like, if you talk about something long enough in front of your phone, there'll be an ad that, that shows up that's related to what but you're it's talking the facts, about. Mark, it's, it's not a, a trope. It, it's the actual truth. 
Yeah. The microphone. Just think about it. Early 2000s, mid 2000s, where people saying how your television is listening to you, your laptops listening to you, yeah. any modern device, and you think, hmm, that's yeah. I can understand the technology, but would they be doing that with everyone? Yes. Yeah, they, they absolutely would. Um, I don't know if you caught the meme, but it was a wonderful meme that if you grab like like a couple of the Nazi intelligence guys from the 40s and brought them to today, right? They're, they're, they, the, the, I think the meme was, you know, like people on the phone or, you know, reminding of the KGB from like the 60s and stuff like that, where the people on the phone was like, you know, you know, we probably shouldn't talk too much. You know, that there might be a spy device on this phone, you know, you know, tracking our phone. Fast forward to 2020, where it's like, hey, Alexa, you know, hey, spy device, tell me, <laughs> tell me what the nearest coffee shop is, will you? And it's like, oh my God. I yeah. Know. It's like you, you put, I mean, yeah, I get it. It's, they make it sexy. It's like, yeah, put, put a, a voice activated spy device in your house. In Vol- your house. And the Nazi thing is like, wait a minute. You got them to do this voluntarily. It's like, not oh, just voluntarily. Man. They're paying through the paying? note. Oh. They're paying top dollar for this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, and 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 they're paying for the upgrades. And, you know, yes. you convince people it's like, oh no, 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 you you got to get the latest. Now the the voice activated stuff didn't catch on as as quickly as I think they thought, but everything else absolutely works to the point where um, oh god, uh, you know the 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 part that I really really irritated me, and not a lot of people are going for it for various reasons, which is you know for your car insurance. I don't know if they do it over there. You can get a little device, and well, it used to be a little device you plugged into your car. Now it's just an app on your phone. Where basically oh, the driving you're... trends and stuff. Yeah, you can you can get lower rates on your insurance if you let your phone track how you track. drive. Yeah. And I'm to a full stop and you know because they because they can integrate it. They know what the speed zone is where you are, exactly. so they know if you're going faster than the speed zone. They know if you make yeah. a full stop. They know your acceleration rate. Yes. And, and all this crap, and and it's like, yeah, and, and I'm going, yeah, I'm never going to be able to do that, <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> well, I we're mean, from I, the old school, Mark, that's why, we're I, from the old school. Now, oh yeah, I, I tell you, I, go this, ahead. The, this is how they introduced that technology in the UK. It was designed for um, newly passed drivers. Yes? Really? So, you, so you've just passed your test. And for, I'll give you a, a real life example. Okay. My niece had put had a, a vehicle, um, passed a test pretty recently. She bought a vehicle, and on, on, as as you do, now this is the sensible way. The the newer generation, they they they're gonna be thinking, what on earth? That's what she did. She bought a car for six hundred and fifty pounds. What we oh, call wow. a little a little run around, a little banger. Oh, yep, okay. I, I know. Yep. <laughs> yeah, just I know to get that. the experience on the road, you know, make the mistakes, bump into reverse into walls, all those little things that you're yeah. going to do when you first get a vehicle. Yep. So it's time for insurance, as we're talking about. They quoted her £3,000-odd pounds, Mark, to insure the vehicle. <laughs> well, for a first-time first driver? First-time driver. Three, wait, £3,000, that's more than... Um, that's more than it's multiple times more than what the exactly. car is worth. Exactly. Exactly. More than quadruple the times. So it's like, what are wow. we t- Yeah. So again, so we fast forward now. So before it was a physical black box that they would actually integrate into the vehicle, which, as you say, would check the trends of yep. the, 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 the driving patterns. How are you accelerating quickly? Are you And do you how more in-depth it is? Is what your driving pattern like in regards to your um, your fuel economy? And then they yep. score you on each journey. <laughs> and your premium can go up and down based upon how you drive. But ultimately, that's your access to the road. If you don't have that, you'll pay six thousand. You'll pay ten thousand. I've heard people saying anywhere up to. If it's a new vehicle now, a brand new vehicle, we yeah. can be paying anywhere from eight, anywhere up to eight thousand pounds a year for the insurance on that vehicle. That's crazy. Yeah. That's absolutely crazy. Yeah, yeah, but I can see it. Yeah, and and the plug-in devices were where, where they started with, but a, that the plug-in devices were just a stopgap until they could figure out how to make it with the app, and because the app makes it so much easier. And, yes. and it's and, trendy and, as well, Mark. It's trendy. 
Oh yeah, and and you have an option, by the way, to win. Like you know, because the app runs all the time. If you're with somebody, whenever you're whenever you're out of the car, you can say, "Oh, I wasn't driving; I was a passenger," in in yes. somebody else's car. So that way, your rating really shouldn't be affected. Although mm-hmm. at that point, you they're still collecting data. It's like, oh, look, they were with this person that wasn't driving safe, yeah. or maybe the the they have the ability also to figure out who, eventually who that person was. Yeah. And and then be, you know, maybe they have information that when they apply again, I could never apply for that type of insurance. I just I just won't do it. I've, I've been doing it too long. It's like, no, I I I grew up in a rural area and stop signs are a, are a guideline. They, they yes. are not. They are not a rule. Yes. It's, it's And honestly, you're also telling people it's like, OK, fine. A stoplights. Get it. You know, you can't go through a stop, you know, stoplight. But a stop yeah. sign like yeah. at one in the morning in a road yeah. where there's no traffic. Are you really yeah. telling me that now I have to come to a f- complete oh, freaking stop? stop? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you do. And it's like, no, no, we're not, doing, we're not doing and, that. But Mark, and you, another thing is, is that they're actually training people to drive that way now. Oof. So in, so in England, as you know, we don't have a, a specific stop sign in that respect. It would be a giveaway. It'd be a broken line to say, you've got to give way to oncoming traffic because you're now entering another main road, for instance. So Ugh. that rather than, as you say, using your bloody head and even roundabouts, you get to a roundabout and you're you're approaching a roundabout and you look to your right because that's the in your case you'd be looking to your left to see the where the traffic is coming from and if sure. there's no traffic you continue to go no they're trained now and instructed to get to the traffic to the roundabout come to a complete stop put it into first gear. Check both ways, and then if it's safe to 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 to, to progress a maneuver, you can continue, continue. Wow, that's that is absolutely nutty. Oh, by the way, what, is it is it sixteen over there like it is here to be a first time driver? Yes, yes, oh, indeed. That's good. That's yeah. I, I, that's See? amazing though. Three multiple. I mean that, and that's just so I'm clear here. Um, is that liability? Do you know what the difference is? Uh, is so like three thousand pounds a year? Is that full coverage? Full or is that coverage. Full? Oh, that's full, full coverage. comp. Okay. Yes, and I think that that uh, we call it third party. So that would be the that would be that when you have an accident, you only pay for the person that you've hit damage. Your right. vehicle, your own vehicle's not damaged, kind of thing. Which right. I think I don't. Know, I, why on earth would an insurance policy even give you the option? Well, okay. The, the theory is here's the theory behind it, which is if you have we call it liability, which is you only you only cover the um, the, the other person because if both of you have liability coverage, then you're both paying for each other and both sides get covered or you know depending on whose fault it is. Yes. But full coverage. The the problem we have over here is we have a number of people that try to drive without insurance. And and that's kind of t- it's been tougher to do because you can't even get a car registration without insurance nowadays here. You can't get like a, like a driver's license without insurance. It's all integrated. However, that doesn't mean that's not going to stop people. There's some people that just don't drive. You know, they, they don't have anything. And so you there's always this chance that you're going to run into an uninsured motorist. And if that's the case, you should have full coverage that way. You, yeah. Because you know, otherwise you're you're screwed. Yes. But but still be having that much money. I mean, it is ridiculous, though, to have coverage on a policy that's quadrupled the amount that the car's worth. Yes. I mean, you, we yeah. we base the coverage partially on, you know, you know model and, and year yeah. and all that other crap. But, yeah, the, the first year – and, by the way, it's always a great decision. I highly recommend it. it, it all my friends – most of my friends were like this, which was the first car you give a kid, it should run <laughs> – it should mm-hmm. run fine. It should be mechanically sound. It yes. should be ugly as hell. Yes. Because because they are going to ding that thing. Yeah. Uh, on more than one occasion, and you you want to give them the peace of mind. It's like, oh yeah, they just backed into a light pole. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> you yes. know, to where they're not walking home, or you know, not talk. You know, they're worried about telling their parents. I mean, yeah, their parents are still going to be ticked off, but mm-hmm. their parents at the end they'll be looking. It's like, well, yeah, <laughs> we're not fixing it. <laughs> you're exactly. you're going to live with that. End. We're, we're, we're glad that we bought the jalopy rather than yeah. in today's world i want the c-class amg edition oh, daddy yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah which is ridiculous kids should never aspire to i mean come on you you probably watching them on youtube look up um expensive car fails do that search and watching a like a 16 year old you know get a 500 horsepower car oh my gosh exactly yeah 
Like two the weeks. Back end just goes, yep. Oh yeah, yeah. The back end squirrels around. It's like, look, yeah. you don't know how to drive yet. Drive yeah. a piece of crap, and then when you want more power, when all of a yeah. sudden it's like, you know what I could use? Because you may be one of those guys, kind of like me. It's like I don't really care about the power. It's like, do I have a passing gear? Great, I can get yeah. around this asshole. Mm. But the rest of it, it's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I guess it's, it's when when you're younger. I will admit, when I was younger, you know, teens, early twenties, I used to drive pretty quickly, and I I did actually want very yeah. fast cars and stuff. And you get to a point when you have them, and you're like, okay, you know, you where you progress, you progress from you know a slower vehicle to a little bit quicker right. to, and you get to a point where you're like, you know what, if I go any faster. I'm going to get a lot of speeding to fines. And yep. then now over here, it's not like you, you can be clocked. Oh, you're, you're doing 60 and a 50. Here's your hundred dollar fine. And that's it. Or maybe a court date and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. In England, they will give you points, a f- points, which are attached to your license. And if you have sure. 12 points, you then bans. Yep. Along with that, you get a fine in proportion to your salary. So before it was just like a, a, a standard fine. So it's a hundred pound, 200 pound, whatever. So if you're going 10% over the speed limit, yeah, then they're going to garnish 10% of your monthly wages. Get the hell out of it. <laughs> you serious? I'm not, I, I may be incorrect in regards to the percentage, but they work we, out. We only do that, that, that there, by the way, they're stealing from the, uh, the Americans on that one where we only do that in huge criminal cases. It's called um, asset discovery. So when when somebody gets hit with like a, a major drug bust or whatever, and they find, you know, cash and cars and yes. crap like that, they base the fine on how much assets, you know, how many assets they, the, and can they tie the assets? You know, did they, did they probably acquire this because of criminal activity? Oh yeah, Indeed. then we're going to find the hell out of you and good luck keeping your house. Um, Finding people, oh my god, I can't even imagine what they do. It's like if they base the, the your traffic fines yes. on, on income, oh, we on lose on yes, oh, Mark. They lose their minds over here. They try to do that. <laughs> well, anyway, like, I will say this it is good incentive because mm. if you're making you know half a million dollars a year, you know, it because you're right. You, you, you know what? I like the logic behind it the logic yeah. behind it because i know what they're getting at which is yeah. if you're making half a million pounds a year um a uh, hundred dollar fine mean means nothing to nothing you. And, and, yeah. and that happens over here all the time people's like fuck it you where they'll just berate the cop it's like write me the damn ticket i'm yeah. leaving right yeah. i do, it doesn't matter my this ticket means nothing to me monetarily only the mm. points matter and even then i've got friends so yes. So yeah, if you but if your ticket ran five ten thousand dollars, oh yeah, it hurt. It <laughs> yes, hurt. indeed, it really hurts. Wow, was that something new, or is that something that's been along for a while? It's pretty new. It's pretty new. I think they Uh-oh. introduced that um, at least well pre pre zombie apocalypse, <laughs> and it, 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 it goes up as well, Mark. So you got thirty. Well, yeah. now so let's I'll, I'll go into some more detail. So. They're now trying to introduce 20. They've got 20 mile an hour zones. Before, our lowest speed limit was 30 miles an hour on roads. Yeah. Um, on minor roads, it can be reduced down to 10. But now what they're doing in like in town centers, in built up areas, they want to reduce that speed limit down to 20 miles an hour now. Ooh. Is, right. that, is that? Oh, sorry. You guys still do miles an hour. Yes. Not kilometers. That's, yes. That's nice. It's nice to know it's not just us. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, we will, we'll, we'll keep it, we'll keep it. That kilometer <laughs> stuff. It, no, and that that might explain why we never went to kilometers and all that other crap. If you guys didn't do it, we probably wouldn't do it either. Yeah. So, so you twenty got, miles an hour. That's that's incredibly slow. It's incredibly slow. It's a lot of strain. And think about the engine sizes now. Most people, it's we've come away from small engine sizes in England, and we've got we've we've, we've adopted this SUC, um, SUV kind of thing, yeah. um, sports utility vehicle. We don't necessarily call it that here. We call, right. call them flipping four by fours. Yep. So we've got loads of them on the roads, high powered, and it's a strain on the engines constantly being in a, in a twenty mile an hour pace sure. is burning lots of fuel doing that yep. as well yep. it's it's counterproductive it reduces because the reason why they're doing it is because of road deaths we've got lots of youngsters 
with yeah. very, very high powered machines, yeah. high powered machines. A lot of them have been tuned as well. So you'll have a thousand BHP vehicle on the road. Not much of the thousand BHP is usable. They probably can use maybe 600 BHP, maybe 650. Sure. But they're just tearing around the streets. There's like, if you just Google road traffic deaths in Birmingham or the West Midlands, you will, it's the numbers are uh, uh, stunning. I, I, bl I, I blame Fast and the Furious. I do. Well, you can blame that. And you can also <laughs> blame, well, look, the manufacturer's mark. Oh, yeah. Why are we having vehicles that can go from zero to 60 miles an hour in 1.2 seconds? Right. I agree. Like, we want hey, to reduce hey, stiffs. I know. I I absolutely agree. No, that there. The, I'm I've never been. Um, I've been more of a you know take passengers in the car. I've never been a, a high speed type of guy, so it, it never related to me. But you're absolutely right. But there was something I was going to ask you. I, and by you're you're right in that even even 300 horsepower is too much for for most most kids. Um, there's there's no point in it. But I want to ask you really quick because you know there's a trend over here that I'm hoping will die here fairly, fairly soon, which is the <laughs> whole um, electric car thing. Is oh, that gosh. is is there? Have no. you seen way more Teslas than you should be? Yeah, they're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. Now, yeah. have you have you actually test driven one? Yeah. An electric vehicle. What sure. do you think? What do you think of them? Well, I mean. I have the same same reaction that a lot of people do. It's like okay, they're they're quiet. Yeah. Uh, the acceleration is is amazing because you know yes. you're you're reducing the amount of moving parts and and yes. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the limitations. Yeah, here we go. Are especially over here now. Over there, not as much because you're you know you're talking about city limits. So like London, yeah, sure, yeah, great, and, and the the greater London area. Lots of you know po possibilities of charging stations, but mm -hmm. over here, as you know, we've got entire states yeah. that have like almost no. You you can't drive through them with an electric car because you're going to have nowhere to plug in. Yeah. Um. And so, a couple things. Um. Because I've done I've done entire episodes on this, which is uh first off, there's not enough charging stations. Like a third yes. of the the charging stations in the United States are in California. Right. Yes. One state. Right. Yeah. In California, lots of Teslas. Sure, great. Uh, limited limited charging stations means limited range. They mm -hmm. don't do really really well in cold weather, and you can't get them too wet. Meaning, if there's wa standing water on the road, especially if it's salt water, you can't really go in there and risk it because the batteries have a chance to potentially catch fire. And which is one other thing, which is if if a, a electric car catches fire, you can't put it out. You you have to let it you have, have to let it burn to the ground. And it's an incredible fire to where we have we have issues where there are tow truck tow truck companies over here, which and I'm I'm actually I know about tow truck companies in UK which have special boxes to mm -hmm. put in the the Tesla because they're worried because if a, if a car catches fire on the back of the truck, yeah. you got to either unload it as fast as you can or you're gonna lose the truck too. Yeah. And so, no, no, it is, uh, uh, well, you know my feelings about Elon Musk. I, I hate the guy. <laughs> I hate Tesla Motors. It, but yeah. it is a trend that it, it seems to be dying over here because people are finally, re oh, I'm sorry, and you have to, what is it, five, five years, six years tops? You have to replace the battery, which is never covered under any warranty. Or warranty, nope. And it runs something around the lines of fifteen to 20,000 pounds, which is a huge yeah. amount of money it's for, huge. For, for a part. You know, yes. to replace the batteries on something. The integral part of the electric vehicle, sir? Hmm? Yeah. It's the only part that matters. It's it's <laughs> the freaking battery. And so yes. but we convinced a lot of people it's like, oh, we're you know, we're we're helping out the planet, you know, we're doing green. And then all of a sudden you realize that you it limits and I know we could tie it into the whole 15 minute city thing, but it limits your your their freedom of the, yeah. the of the gas engine. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you will never. Yeah, you want to take a road trip? You want to go uh, four hours or five hours in that direction? Good luck. You're not. <laughs> you're not doing it. And and with a gas car, you always. You didn't have to worry about. Yeah. You know, if you were going to run into a gas station, right? There's gas stations freaking everywhere. Everywhere. Right? But, but power ones with with electric cars, you have to go online and look up before you even get in your freaking car. Yeah. Where the where the stations are, and not only that. Uh, sorry, one last thing on this. 
which is when you get in, you know, when you pull into a station, like I could pull into the gas station right down the road here and I could fill up in what under three minutes. That's it. I mean, full tank, three minutes, I'm gone, right? Five, five minutes if I want to go in and buy a hot dog, right? <laughs> you go to a charging station, you better, you better have a picnic lunch with you because you're not leaving anytime soon. <laughs> And I've seen this because, and it's ridiculous because they will put picnic tables and swings and yes. stuff next to the charging station. It's like, why yeah. do you do that? It's not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you might yeah. as well take the family out <laughs> and do something. Oh, yeah. It's it's stupid. It's absolutely it, stupid. It, Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. And you've, you're have you highlighting so many real world reasons. Like, as you say, the positives, you, you've, you've totally laid it out and I'll try and add a little more, more meat onto the bones. Yeah. But ultimately, as you say, <clears throat> pardon self, they, they're, they're, the idea, the principle, you know, as a, a someone who is driven, you know, combustion engine vehicles all our lives to go into yeah. that, it, it's very different. It's like, oh, this is cool, you know, it's different. But when you look at real world, like, yeah, if you're just pottering maybe 50 miles a day to and fro, and that's your whole world, yes. 365, yep. then an electric vehicle maybe before for you, you get your station yeah. tied, get you know installed to your house where you can you know do that trickle charge overnight yep. and stuff. By yep. all means, that that works, that works. But then again, we're looking at every two years we go for a service. We've got to pay specific attention to the brakes because the brakes are the most used thing on an electric yep. vehicle, and yep. the brakes aren't the cheapest. As you say, the lifespan of the batteries. Okay, yep. so let's look at the battery elements in 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 more detail. Yeah, they cannot manufacture. There is not enough resources to manufacture the batteries for all right. of us because they want. The, the 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 thing is that everybody needs to move away from combustion engines because we need to save the planet. Mark, remember, Mark and Noble, we are pl saving the planet. Sure. It's no longer global. It's no longer global warming. It's climate change because we can't say that the planet's warming anymore and all this right. kind of stuff. So it's net zero. We're moving towards that. We're cutting all the all the, shutting down all the coal plants. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut down virgin trees in British Columbia, and then we're going to load them up on boats, and then we're going to ship them thousands of miles away to England and Europe, where they're going to repurpose coal plants and burn wood pellets to turn turbines to create electricity, uh -huh. to then pump into the electric vehicles. So it's yeah. kind of like it defeats the, the purpose. It yeah. totally, and people don't think, yeah, electricity, yeah, there's, there's electricity plants, noble market, you know, they, they, uh, they just get the electricity and then they just give it to all the houses. It's just distributed. Yeah, but how right. is electricity made? Right. Does it come out of the thin air, does it? Yeah. Unless we're talking about Nikolai Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it is unsustainable. It's ridiculous, but again, the 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 sheep that are out there, there we convince so many people. Well, that and you know the ash experiment, which is just basically peer pressure. Which is you once you got a certain number of Teslas on the road, mm. you, you know once you saw two of your neighbors get freaking Teslas. And by the way, why again? It, a lot of these Tesla people seem to be the 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 Priuses. I completely understood. You remember back in the day when yes. Priuses were freaking everywhere. Yes. Those were a hybrid car and it had a little engine just yeah. in case, you mm -hmm. know, so you could drive around town and you could put gas in it just in case, which was a yeah. wonderful idea. Tesla doesn't have that option, and again, and I think that's deliberate, which is it would be so easy to put in a little tiny gas engine in there, so so you could help yourself out. But no, they they want to try to force people into the idea of electric only. It's absolutely you're right, you're right. There's not enough minerals. The electric grid itself will never be able to sustain that many people trying to plug in. And what was happening also, in California, Mark? What was happening in California last year? Oh, where the people were, were just no. There what? was there was there was they were saying on the news you cannot charge. Um, I think it was only two days a week they could charge, and in yeah. certain counties it would be like, okay, yeah. you can charge on this day, you can't charge on that way. Oh, we're having drains on the on the grid, so chill out with the AC. Only use your AC when you need it, and all this kind yeah. of stuff. This like it, wake up I people. I don't know what they do in Britain, but in California, they charge your your power bill is based on also based on 
what time of the day you use yes. that power. Yes. We're saying we don't, it, it, that's a state by state thing. And so like what, what you were saying earlier, one of my, uh, one of my friends, the only people that the electric cars seem to work for are the people that charge at home drive. They know exactly how, how much they can drive, you know, around. Yeah. And this is in Los Angeles where there are a ton of Teslas and then they get back home and, and then they can plug in, but they only plug in after a certain time so that yes. they get the minimum amount of usage because you don't yeah. want to, you don't want to charge during peak hours. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it is. Yeah. It's a dumb idea. Look, I love the Tesla look of, the, you know, I, I love the the body type and I, I love the the cool little features and the fact that yeah. you're basically, you know, you got this massive touch screen display, which really yeah. is more of a distraction than anything else. But, <laughs> you know, it's like it's, it's like you've been telling us the entire time not to put huge displays inside, you know, yeah. in the front seat of a car. But, yes. hey, you know, people don't seem to be crashing. So that's good. Uh, but no, I, th I think it's going to fade away pretty quick just because, well, the, the big thing why it's going to fade away here is because of the truck market. You know, they, they spent a huge amount of money and were subsidized by the government to create electric trucks. You know, the, they're, pushing the, them, they're pushing them here. Mercedes, yeah, yeah. the, the yeah. Volvo, they, they've got electric truck. It doesn't even make any a, a heavy goods vehicle running yeah. on electricity. Yeah. So, what, yeah. what, 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 what weights will that be able to pull? Right. Well, how no, many? Yeah, the, the towing, we we did tests over here, and when I mean, if you're towing even a, a medium sized boat, your your range goes down really really fast. To where it's like, okay, what what was the point of this? You to where you're, you're all of a sudden looking. It's like, why did you get this in the first place? Because yes. now you you've taken your range. You're not even gonna be able to take the boat in one shot to whatever lake you want to go to. Yeah. You're gonna have to stop on the way. Oh, by the way, and spend two hours doing whatever yeah. it is. Uh -huh. yeah. if, if if Mark, especially yeah. in America, if you can find a charger that's free that somebody else isn't using, right? Mm. Yeah, that yeah, that isn't that isn't broken. By the way, oh, oh we, and that's another thing that one that isn't broken. I watched yeah. a video of a, a gentleman in America saying, "My the charger I'm currently using um, can use anywhere up to." 350 watts per kilowatts per hour to charge my vehicle yeah he did some kind of calculation and said okay i'm currently on 135 kilowatts per, per hour if if, if an average home takes x amount of kilowatts based upon the final charge uh, this is the equivalent to the kilowatt usage of like 300 plus houses just to charge his car once so that, that's a, that's another thing. It's like the the amount of power stored, and then let's let's paint the scenario. So Jerry and his wife are going on vacation, and they take the Tesla to LAX, and they yeah. they go in, they go they go into the Bahamas. Okay, they mm -hmm. go in there, and they go in there for they're just going for a quick seven days. They're just going for a yeah. quick seven days, yeah. and they go to the Bahamas, and they come back, and they load up all the luggage into their Tesla, and then they press the button. And it says the battery's dead because it's discharged over a period of time. The batteries yeah. on electric vehicles discharge. Yeah. So you find when people come back from vacation, how do they get their vehicles started? How do, yeah. they, get, how do they get it charged? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It is, it is uh, on all sides. It, it's, it, it's an experiment, one that I'm glad I didn't fall for, that most of my friends didn't fall for. Uh, but it's, it's going to go away. Uh, it just, it, the, the practicality kind of like, and I don't want to drag this out too much, but it kind of reminds me of the, um, it's a little better, uh, in, but you're old enough to remember the, uh, back in the day when we were talking about the hydrogen fuel cell cars. Oh yes. That was a thing, right? It and was. the reason, the reason why it was supposed to be hydrogen fuel cell is because the, um, the oil and gas companies control the, the world's supply of hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And and because they the electric cars they didn't know what to do there because they don't control the utilities they don't mm -hmm. control the the electric grid and if they wanted to buy the electric grid by the time they started buying them all up they'd be paying huge amounts of money because people would be holding out anyway the point was is that hydrogen fuel cell cars again started in California they set up charging stations but there were huge flaws one they they worked horrible in cold weather so yes the range was okay. And could you drive somewhere? Yeah, but you don't drive where anywhere cold because once you get there, good luck starting your freaking car. Yes. Um, the other thing was, and that's a big, that's a big, that was like the deal breaker, which was you couldn't find 
a way because how are you going to heat up? <laughs> it's not a smart idea to attach a heating element to hydrogen I liquid fuel. It's a bad, it's a bad Hindenburg type idea. Yes. And that and when, because it's explosive, gasoline is it's highly flammable, but it's not explosive. Hydrogen gas is explosive. And so, you know, they were worried about the car crashes, like what happens with a car crash, you know, well, anyway, but the point was, is that quietly behind the scenes, hydrogen fuel cell cars just, it was a thing, but it's like, oh, you know, presidents endorsed it and all the politicians gave a thumbs up on camera. And then yeah. within a few years, it was like, nobody talked about it. It was gone. All the, the charging stations were removed. And it was like the people, that's one of the things I don't like about media Whereas when they want to kill a topic, they just kill a topic. There's no ceremony. It just goes away. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what the used car market. Oh, sorry. One, one last thing, but be, as I'm beating this electric dead horse, which is, um, there was something, a story I came up with, with, uh, recently, which was the, the fleet markets, the rental car markets, Yeah, they yeah. account for huge amounts of the rental or the, the electric car market. Right. And they all of a sudden have realized, qu again, quietly behind the scenes, that electric cars are not going to do well for a rental car because there's too many questions. You know, you you buy a rental car, it's like, oh, hey, where are you thinking of going? Oh, I'm thinking of driving, you know, 300 miles that way. <laughs> okay, well, you know, here's a charging map, you know, for you, <laughs> which you never had a rental thing. And there was just way too many logistic issues. So all the rental car companies like, yeah, we're not going to buy any more rental cars, which meant that when they're ready – the a lot of the used car market comes from the rental car market, you know, because they exactly. they'll dump thousands of cars simultaneously, and so all these electric cars are going to go on to the secondary market. Which means if you don't sell your electric car, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom here. If you don't sell your electric car, pretty damn soon, you're not going to get a chance to because all the car markets, all the used car lots are going to be full of them, and you're yeah. going to it's going to be so much competition. You're not you aren't going to be able to give it away. Well, uh, in Eng in in England, the yeah. the uptake in regards to the purchase, the actual purchase yeah. uh, with cash money, is yeah. very very low. The model, and this is the model for most things now, it's everything subscription based. You, everyone's life is now based upon uh, a subscription. Yep, you're absolutely right. So it's right. all lease. Like they've moved that lease model. Like America is lease model. Lease you, you, you to to purchase vehicles. You guys don't necessarily purchase purchase vehicles. You have a a, a, a lease, a two year lease, three year lease, and you just right. continue and cycle that through. Right. That wasn't a thing over here. That was only for businesses to do. Now this is available for the last, I would say, what well, I would say, ten years, and the yep. last five years even stronger. Oh, last ten years even stronger. That yeah. you, you don't even consider the traditional. Working hard, saving a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. Oh, I've got twenty thousand pounds. Okay, let's go buy a car. Or go into the bank and saying, I need twenty thousand pounds. What's the rate? Okay, blah blah blah. Sign the deal. Go and purchase the car. That is not even a thing now. Now no, you right. go online. No. Uh, Tesla model. Okay, black. All right then. Uh, I want the twin one. All right then. All right, here we go. One thousand two hundred and forty-five pounds a month. Okay, <sighs> if I click this box. I can get the maintenance with it as well. All right. Oh, I can get some tires. All right, then. My grand price is £1,600 a month. All right, then, yeah, let's go for that. How quickly can I get it? All right, then, deposit of £12,000. All right, then, cool. Oh, and I can only do 5,000 miles. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And they'll just click away. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Limit 5,000 miles. And then they'll get it, use it, and then they'll take it back. And then they'll get a huge amount of miles additionally yeah. on top because they forgot oh i was only supposed to do five thousand miles right <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of like the old school um overage minutes for the uh, early cell phones where oh. you, you had a certain number of minutes and and yeah. of course with kids they always went over and they charged you through the freaking nose for it <laughs> uh and yeah it was it was bad i mean the, but you're right the subscription thing it's it that has been the trend recently everything's sub-based um part of it's catering to gen zers where you know they don't have a lot of money and it's easier yeah. if we, you know, we just pay as we go uh, it's like yeah but you're not and you you know the saying as well as anyone it's like yeah but you don't own anything yeah you're just i mean you you're being you're being forced to work just to keep what the the things that you have that you don't even own oh, just yeah. to, just just to lease these things like uh anyway dead assets else? dead assets yeah. uh, i mean <clears throat> yeah. on the business sense 
it makes perfect sense. You don't need to necessarily own anything from a business standpoint, you know. No. But from no. an individual, like we're old school of you know of sorts. I hate even yeah. saying that, but we were. Well, no, it's like, true. Gen, Gen, no, I mean Gen X is the last of um, you know the people that had disposable income and knew what it meant. And and yeah. you're right, you know, saving up, getting things to where you know things would sit. It's like, oh yeah, I own that. <laughs> and I, <laughs> yeah. And and I can turn around and sell it. You know, yes. we were the ones that were on eBay when it came out and, you know, we're buying and selling, you know, the eBay changed everything. I haven't used eBay in years, but I, back in the day, oh, I was a fiend, Indeed. you know, it's like, oh, all the cool things that are out there, yes. you know, all the cool collectibles and all the, you know. Exactly. And, and that's a great, you bring up a good point. I didn't even think about that. What? That, that idea and that concept created and made. What, what we know today as eBay, because eBay is a, a bigger thing to people than what it was when, when we were first using it. Right. Right. Yeah, when, when we were first using it, it was just this garage, giant garage sale. Yeah. But, but, but now people have used it. Yeah, now people use it. Well, they, they've tooled the system to where they can they can make a living off of it, potentially. I mean, you know, yeah. all the, the tricks have been exposed years ago. Um, but yeah, like the people that will go to what they'll do now, you know, now that there's smartphones and everything, you know, they go, you've seen it, you know, like they'll, they'll go into a, like an estate sale and take pictures of things and then immediately yeah. scan and see what's on it. And they'll buy it based on, you know, they'll, in some cases they'll have it sold before they even walk out of the room with it, Yep. which, which is even weird. And it's like, which is kind of dangerous, but at the same time, I, I guess it works. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah. eBay was such a wonderful, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, uh, eBay, you know, back in when, when eBay was founded over here, it used, used to be able to buy interesting things on eBay, including guns, right? <laughs> that was the wow. thing you could do. I know, right? And, uh, of course, you know, parents groups and jumped on this and, and said, like, this is a bad idea. You know, you don't want to give kids the exposure, you know, to buy, you know, Pokemon cards and assault weapons <laughs> at the same mm. time. And, you know, even though they can't, right, you still have to go through the channels, but you don't want them exposed to that sort of, you know. Options, this, yeah. Yeah, the options, you know. And so what, and eBay, in a surprising move, eBay didn't even, didn't even blink. There's like, yeah, you know what, you're right, they're gone. Didn't even, didn't even wait for the protest. It was like, no, no, we'll pull them off. And within, I think, a week, maybe two, after they pulled it up, this brand new website showed up. <laughs> which was which looked absolutely identical to eBay except the color scheme was military green and brown and stuff like yeah. that and it was called gunbroker.com and it oh. only sold, it only sold guns and I I knew the model very well I was like I'll be damned they just used the skeleton of eBay yeah. and and took it and I'm sure they were majority you know owners behind the scenes it's like yeah we fine we don't have to sell guns here we're going to sell mm. guns over here and it worked, and to this day, it's uh, it's still out there. And I I thought again, you know, capitalism, you know, the necessity, you know, the the indeed, we'll we'll Market find demands. a way. Yeah, we'll find a way to to do it. Hey, I want to mention to you really quick. Yeah. Um, so you know, before we 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 talked last week, I sent you that uh, that anonymous video, right? With the because yes. you asked you asked about. Do you know there's I I know you didn't listen to Strange World last night, but there's a story behind that. And the story behind that is really weird because I, I, you know, I, I go, wow, I go, the AI on this, you know, the, the artwork is gorgeous. It I is. go, I go, it's really, really cool. Um, in fact, hang on, let me see if I can paste it in. Is it still in here? Yeah, I'll paste yeah, it in. I, I, yeah. I paste it in a new thing. So okay. the, a, the AI is gorgeous. I go, I sent it to uh, David Weiss, you know, from DITRH, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. the app. And, um, and he, and he goes, here's my game. He goes, they stole it. <laughs> they stole, they stole the, that, that video. I go, what? Who the hell did they steal it from? And he goes, he goes, this guy, this neo-human, uh, uh, in fact, he's a British guy. He's in, he's over in your neck of the woods. Wow. He's, he's UK. He's only got like 6,000 subs. And it's like, and, and it blew me away, you know, cause, uh, anonymous has, uh, pushing 4 million. So, and I was like, why the hell? So what they did was they took his most recent two videos. Both were flat earth, right? They, they mashed them together. They chopped them up in the editing. They removed all his credits, added credits of their own. What? <laughs> and they took it. 
And and I was going, what the hell? I go, I go, this is this is flat earth on flat earth crime. I'm going, what what are you guys yeah. doing? I go, why why would you do this? And so and and on top of that, you know, because I was emailing the 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 Neo kid, his name's Christian. And I, I and he goes, I have no idea. And he and but however, he did mention he goes, he goes, he, he did make the the video's Creative Commons license, if you know what that is. Meaning yes. he can take them and use them for the things. Now, and I all my videos are Creative Commons licensed. If you guys don't know what that means, it means that that um if something's labeled Creative Commons, it's like you can take it and share it anywhere you want. Yeah. However, you can't own it. And so what these guys did was they took it, they put it on their channel, they changed the title, they removed him from the credits. Now, luckily, he emailed them, and they put him in the description box as the narrator. And oh, it's my like, God. Wh- whatever, but it's like, really? I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why, you know, why, why not give him some credit? It's like, look, he spent a lot of time. Apparently, it wasn't just the AI artwork. He also massaged it with um, Photoshop and After Effects. Okay. And and it takes them a long time. It takes them months to do these, which is why. And and so the video that I sent you from Anon, which they just released, this kid did it four months ago. And wow. now, in all fairness, uh, I you know he I wouldn't have even have known who this guy was until Anon released it on their channel. But I still think and and did Anon do anything illegal? Nope, not at all. No, did they, no. did they breach? Did they breach some etiquette? Yeah, they did. Yeah, that was like, your business. Come on, it's the truth community. What are you doing? We're all on the yeah. same team here. So I thought it was really, I thought it was really interesting that. Uh, but anyway, so the point was, getting back to the artwork, because I told you I'd, I'd mention. Um, I'll see if I can get you the the guy's email address because yes. um, email him and and ask him, you know, if there's anything, you know, mention where you are, and uh, and it's like ask him what he uses because there are a number of AI programs out there that you can use to generate artwork. Yes, but he didn't think he was one of those types that he he didn't even think it was good enough. So he he altered it and massaged it for the videos. And I I get why Anonymous took it because they it looks it felt like an anonymous yes. video when you're yes. watching. It's like oh yeah, this is something Anon would totally do. It's yeah. like yeah, but you can't say it's yours. And they even no. uh, last thing before I drop that one, <laughs> which is they they even they even licensed it. That's the part that threw me. Which means that because when you look in YouTube, it's like, oh, well, it's licensed. It's not, yeah. it, they didn't make a creative comments. And so, technically speaking, like, for example, I could grab the Anon video, put it on my channel, and they could strike me for exactly. it. Exactly. Right? Yeah, that's the wrong. Kid, the kid, though, he could grab their video, put it on his channel, right? Because I know everything about the, the YouTube policies. Mm-hmm. He could, he could grab, put it on his channel. They could try to strike him, and he could come back and say, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> It, because one of the options when you're counter striking is actually it's my video. My they video, can't yeah, stri- they, they can't strike me, and he can yeah. come back because his date stamped. It's like no, no, I made this four months ago, and the other one seven months ago. So Fair. whatever, just so weird. The but, things, yeah. man, the things that these people do, it's it's uh-huh. disingenuous, man, and that that to me that highlights. The, the whole thing, man, it, it like, you know, are, 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 is this anonymous? Is the, are these people actually for the good of, 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 you know, or I, is I, I, I think so. I mean, they, I think, well, per, my personal opinion is I, you know, cause I don't, do I believe they actually have 4 million subs? Nah, probably not. Um, because they, they don't really have that many hits, uh, for, for the, the videos are the pretty ratio. Low. The yeah, ratio yeah. is pretty low. So do I think, you know, because you can buy anything. Again, I highly recommend if anyone's never listened to or never watched it, watching Fake Famous, which is one of the, the finest social media documentaries out there. <laughs> um, if, if you've ever seen it, it is brilliant. Um, it, and it, it, again, it's an American thing, which is that they're basically saying that everything regarding social media and the numbers are probably fake. Yeah. Because it's the only credibility that's out that's worth anything out out there. So if you have a million subs, you have a million subs. Prove to me they're real. You know they're not real. Yes. And since you can't prove they're not real, we give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And the yeah. the, the the author of the documentary had this great line. He's going, look. He goes, he goes on Instagram. There are millions of people with at least a hundred thousand followers. Mm. He goes. There's only ten thousand famous people in the world at a given point in time. Who are these people? Oh no! <laughs> it's like they're not—they're not real. It's just, but everyone 
thinks that the credibility is real. And, and so it's like, oh, yeah, fine. If you want to believe that um, Mr. Beast really has 190 million subs, you know, which uh. is more than half the population in the United States. If you really think that's that's true, then go ahead. But you got to remember that, like, the biggest celebrities, uh, you know, like like Taylor Swift, what, she at 40? Yeah. So is Mr. Beast really bigger than Taylor Swift? No. No, of course not. <laughs> What do, what what do you think about this this co- kind of controversial thing that he did of of recent reference these wells he went to uh, the continent of Africa and went to multiple you know um, countries there and got these wells done what, what what do you think about all that Mark he's okay Mr Beast which again this this started way back in the day it started with PewDiePie which was. PewDiePie was one of the early, again, this, this goes into what's known as, um, um, uh, proprietary currency or, uh, in-game currency, yes. which is, and, and the Americans, the Americans strive to win at any cost. They will lie, cheat, steal, and sometimes kill for it. Right. Um, but most of the time they lie and cheat. And so it started out within the gaming world where, uh, if there was in-game currency, you would get offshore accounts, usually Asian groups, sometimes Russian, but usually, you know, sweatshops that would mine this currency and then sell it back to the Americans, right? That's how it works. And so it was called, the 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 model is called pay to win, which is, okay, I've got extra money. Do I spend 100 to 200 hours working my character or do I just pay an offshore account, you know, uh, you know some, some group in Malaysia? Yeah. You know, money, and then I'm going to max out my character. People, the, especially the the millennials and Gen Zers, they have no patience whatsoever. Yeah. That somebody came along and thought, oh my God, we could do this to anything. Because what's the difference between a, a gold in Warcraft and hits and likes and subs yeah. in YouTube? Nothing. There's literally no difference. All you have to do is mine it, and then you can sell it back to the Americans. And so PewDiePie, this is where the genius came in. So PewDiePie figures this out, his, him and his team, and he starts buying subs and likes and hits. And what happens is YouTube, because he wasn't breaking any of the rules in YouTube, they're paying him for some of the likes and the subs and the hits that he's getting because that's what they pay you on on the metrics. Yes. So he's, he's, getting, he's getting kickback from YouTube and he's taking that money and he's sinking it into more subs and it becomes cyclical, right? The problem is you can't go backwards. So not 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 um, artificially. You you know once you have fifty million subs, you have fifty million subs, right? Indeed. And then all of a sudden, people were um. You, you'll see where I'm getting to with um. Uh, Mr. Beast here in a second. So what? to the point where American producers, Hollywood is like, oh my God, it's like, we got to get this kid on a television show, right? So they grab PewDiePie and they put him on a primetime television show. I believe it was called um, Let's Prank PewDiePie or something like that. And it tanked immediately. Absolutely <laughs> freaking tanked. Why? Because there were no viewers. Why yeah. were there no viewers? We don't know. It's a mystery. Well, it's mm. because... The how because his race his p his his subs were absolutely artificial, the the we in fact I remember a, a really quick side story I remember watching him because I, I I watched him from time to time just to see like okay, is there an actual draw here right is yeah. is there there's got to be something going on to where he's actually getting these subs you know there's got to be a base here somewhere I knew that he started out you know making Minecraft videos where he was literally just laughing at the dumbest things in my Minecraft I hated Minecraft doesn't really matter. So he was yelling at the screen at one point because he was angry because, you know, he most of the peop, kids nowadays, especially gamers, they'll they'll try to sell their gaming chair. They're the yes. city. Right? It's a gaming chair. And he let it slip. He's going, they told me if I can sell 100 gaming chairs, 100 of these chairs, I'll get a price break. Right. Well, that's pretty standard. It's like, wait a minute. At the time, he had 50 million subs. Right. I'm going you can't sell a hundred freaking gaming chairs, right? No, You're complaining because yeah. you haven't sold a hundred gaming chairs. You know, they're not <laughs> that expensive. And so it's like, how many people don't you have? So anyway, they kicked him off. Uh, you know, they, 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 ca- they kicked him off the show and, and uh, there wasn't going to be a show. And then he, then he started doing dumb things, but that model was in place at that point. Everyone's like, okay, the people realized what he had done and quietly behind the scenes, there were lots of people that were, that were buying things. And then Mr. Beast came out of nowhere and just started going through the freaking roof. His hook was 
spend the money, go places, film everything, and nothing is basically off limits as long as it's constructive. To your point, going to what country was he in? Was it just Africa? Africa? Just yeah. somewhere in Africa. Yeah, setting up wells to, to, to do water in Africa. Did it seem somewhat, I mean, there were multiple reasons why he was getting flack for it. One was it because it seemed disingenuous. It's like, okay, yes. you're, you're doing charity for a, a country that you really weren't, you weren't dedicated to the cause beforehand. Why are you out there now? Right. And the same point, the same this this same guy all of a sudden was just did a video apparently where he was like buried underground for a week. It's like, OK, where are you David Blaine now? You know, are you Chris, <laughs> Chris Angel? What yeah. are we doing? He's, he's the 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 new the new people that are out there, the the not the reaction videos, but the new content creators are basically following the mod. The, they're. They're living and dying by the the oldest model of media and entertainment, which is give the people what they want. Yeah. And if you don't know what they want, or you know, you just go off the chat room. And it, even if the chat, you know, if if the chat room leans in a, in a direction which even seems outlandish, you get emails or your corporate sponsors, your Patreon people start at telling you it's like here's what you should do. You're gonna do it, even if it, there's no continuity to it. Yeah. It's like, okay, one this week, you know, this month I'm in Africa. Next month, you know, I'm in, I'm in Belgium. You know, yeah. looking at 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 uh, what whatever something something stupid over there. He's going wherever the wind is blowing, Indeed. and if if he does, and I, he's not even telling people ahead of time. So yes, did it seem disingenuous? You bet, you bet it did. My problem, okay, my my beef with Mister with Mister Beast was he wasn't his people around him i don't think are really savvy because he felt you did you hear about the whole ninja or the ghost kitchen thing that he he dealt with okay so he wanted to do uh, a franchise right it's like he obviously wasn't getting movies or television crap or anything like that yeah of course he was getting some sponsorships but the the corporations are getting smarter nowadays it's like okay fine you got two million subs it's like you know what what sort of metrics do you have and you know they look very closely at the people nowadays and so he thought i'm going to open a franchise i'm going to open up a series of burger joints right called mr Mm -hmm. mr beast burger (laughs) however he wanted to do it on the cheap. He wasn't going to go mortar and brick. You know, he wasn't going to start building, you know, yes. trying to compete with McDonald's and Burger King. So he hired Ghost Kitchens, a ghost kitchen company. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know Ghost Kitchens. Yes, yes. Ghost Kitchens, right? Which And a ghost kitchen can be any restaurant. And you you don't – there's a reason why you don't go with Ghost Kitchens. which Because, okay, you've got Bob's Barbecue over in Tennessee, he's going to make your burger. And you've got somebody in New York, he's going to make your burger. What are the chances those two burgers are going to even be remotely the same? Taste the same, exactly. Yeah, no. It's, <laughs> it, there's a reason why, the reason why McDonald's did so well, and again, if you've never watched the movie, um, the Michael Keaton movie, The Founder, which That's is... excellent. It's, it's an excellent movie. And for me, the most, I love insightful movies where they give away the secret, mm. which was they, because remember, in the beginning, it was like McDonald's was going to fail miserably because they were doing it it wasn't ghost kitchens but the there was no um format for the burgers that anyone was adhering to it's like yes. you know the, the the you weren't there was no way you could do it it's like it's not like you could blackmail the restaurants into cooking exactly the same unless you could blackmail them and what she did was and the lawyer it wasn't had nothing to do with the mcdonald brothers or ray Kroc yeah. or any it was the lawyer he goes no 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 he goes <laughs> you lease the land to them he goes, yeah. they, they own the building, you own the land. He goes, you're not in the food business, you're in the real estate business. Yes. And, 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 he, so he, and again, if you guys, anyone listening doesn't realize, the reason why McDonald's did what did with it, why everything tastes the same, no matter where you go on McDonald's, is they're being ex, it's straight up extortion, which yep. is you cook it exactly how we tell you to cook it, or we pull the lease on your land and you are done. And it is just straight up fear and, and it worked and it absolutely worked. My point, why circle back to Mr. Beast? Why, why did Mr. Beast fail with the ghost kitchens? Two reasons. One was because he didn't do that. It's like, okay, we're going to do ghost kitchens and like, what was it? Hundreds, hundreds of ghost kitchens. Right. And people were complaining. It's like, your burger sucks. Your burger sucks. And, and then on top of it, he, he was dumb enough to come out and say, which again, one of the first rules in advertising, which you don't break, which is you don't, you don't attack, um, a product on, you know, publicly, 
right? There's a reason why um, Chevrolet does not make fun of Ford. It's always positive ads. Oh, here's Chevy truck. It's great. It's great. You don't say Ford truck sucks. You can't mm-hmm. do that, right? So, but Mr. Beast comes out and he goes, yeah. He goes, my burgers do suck. He goes, the, the company that I hired to do the ghost kitchens, oh, they God. suck, right? Yes. And what do you think happened? The the ghost kitchen company sued him instantly and yeah. said, you are an idiot because I don't know how much he's going to have to settle for, but it's going to be a pretty penny because it's like we, we, we might as well close down because you and all your 190 million followers, so you yes. say, you yes. just told, told them not to use us and our reputation is sunk. You mm. can't, you want to criticize someone fine. You definitely don't criticize the competition, and you certainly don't criticize your own partner, your yeah. own contracting company. Slanderous. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's yeah, straight up slander. And uh, uh, he got he got freaking cracked for that. So no, Mister Mister Beast, he is um, just a professional uh, idiot. He he's just going. I mean, he's the, the he is what social media has evolved into, which is you spend a lot of money to make some money but at the same yeah. time you could be pulled at any point. I mean you could be you could be canceled if you're not careful. You got to you've got to watch everything you do. Uh it is not necessarily a career. It is it is you're holding on to it for for dear life. Um I'll throw one more out at, at you which is the um uh YouTube has been changing something recently where they're going after reaction channels. Because they, there was uh, the speech I did at the Flat Earth Conference in Vegas uh, this year was talking about how Flat Earth is going to be around forever because we created the content and other people react to it, right? You yeah. know, there's lots of lots of reaction channels. You know, the people react to movies, react to songs, tons and tons of reaction channels. And there's, um, I, I know it applies to American and uh, UK kids, where like a third, one out of every three kids that's that's growing up right now, Gen Zers and and now the uh, the Gen Alphas that are coming up behind them. You ask them what they want to be when they grow up. A third of them want to be influencers. Yes. And that is super dangerous because it's like, okay, well, one, it's not going to work because you know, you want to make, and a lot of them aren't, you wouldn't even be doing it for the money. They'd be doing it for the, the dopamine, you know, they, the, 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 the clicks and likes, but YouTube's getting, finally getting ahead of this one. And what they're doing is they are demonetizing channels. They're not they're not penalizing them. They're just saying, look, you have to have on your channel at least like 40%. I can't remember what the, the original ratio is. You have to have at least 40% original content. If you don't, you're out of the partner program. And that's it. We're we're demonetizing you. And that and what and they're doing this now retroactively with with big some of these big channels. And I get it. I totally get it. Like YouTube doesn't want they don't want to have their their platform completely flooded with reaction channels. Yeah. If if they can help it. But there's guys out there, you know, like a million subs, you know, and yeah, fine. You reviewed a whole bunch of movies and reviewed other clips from other channels. Wasn't yeah. your stuff though. It's like, yeah, I appreciate that you're doing commentary on it. And yes, you got to make money off of it for a number of years. Indeed. But that's that that's gone now to where they're they're saying, nope, you can't make money off of uh just off you have to do something else well what are you going to do with the 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 kids that are coming up because remember they're too young to to have original content they're, of they're, course they that's have, like excellent points they don't have any life experience what are they gonna they you know the the artists that are out there the people that create you know in the five forms of um art you know uh, pictures sculptures music dance and literature they're fairly rare and for a deliberate reason, right? You know, there's only, you know, so many people that, 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 that make all those things. The rest of the people out there respond to them. It's the audience base. It's the people that, that react to them. Uh, but, and YouTube's now finally getting ahead of that. And they're saying, yeah, I, I think they finally realized it's like, yeah, we can't have, I'm sure they've seen the, the metrics where there's all these kids coming in, especially with like TikTok and crap like that. Where yes. Just reacting to to everything. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I ramble. What what else did you want to talk about? Well, let, well, let's 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 wind off um wind up even with the, yep. the terrible stuff that is happening with uh, Israel and um, Palestine. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, well, the, my personal opinion uh was that it was one of our last ditch efforts to 
get into to 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 create a world conflict yeah that would distract a whole bunch of people you know, again nothing distracts people like war mm-hmm. and and we want to do it we you know the americans and the british the sas i'm not leaving you guys out oh, oh by the way <laughs> I don't think for a second that everybody else doesn't know, you know, the, the especially Russia. Russia's got it in for you guys. <laughs> I they absolutely the the graphics I remember when when they were showing the, they they're showing the uh, their nuclear torpedo. Oh, oh yes. God, yeah. Where they shot it on the they suppose, you know, they they did the graphics where they did it on the the west side of the UK and the tidal wave just yeah. wiped out the entire continent there was nothing there yeah, and i was like going, oh i go and i was i was wondering it's like what the hell did these guys do and then i'm looking into it more it's like oh yeah the sas they're they're terrible to where there was that um i don't know if we talked about last year um the air force base uh that was north of you that supposedly was storing fireworks oh and it, yes and, it blew up, you know, this big thing. And and it's like, coincidentally, they were training Ukrainians <laughs> up at that base. And it's like, yeah. And and the, I knew full well what Russia was doing. It's like, yeah, the Ukrainians, some of those idiots probably brought their cell phones. The Russians knew who, who they were talking to. It's like, oh, there they are, that, that UK base. Fire missile, <laughs> you know, and... and, and and, and did it, and again, brilliant, because the UK, like the Americans, uh, it's a saying I've come up with, and that is, is it a war if the media doesn't cover it? No, it's not. It's just yeah. some random <laughs> industrial accident you know, yeah. that Indeed. happened. And so, and so this happened, and Britain couldn't do anything. What are they going to say? <laughs> They're going to say, Russia attacked us? No, can't say that. Because it's like, mm. why would they hit that Air Force base? Who was there? And it's just, uh, it was too many questions. Anyway, so the point was with with with... So, you know, the Ukraine thing, which we try, we've been kicking off because we, we'd love to, to acquire Ukraine because it's right next to, to Russia um, as part of NATO. It's not going to happen. Russia is not going to give it up. Um, but at the same time, they're not going to start marching into Poland and Germany either. Um, and then the, the China thing, uh, you know, we, we'd love to kick off something with China. But China, ah, they just don't have the teeth for it. Japan? They got they got the teeth for it all day long. I can I now understand why Japan beat up on China so badly back in the day, you know, it, back in the old days. The the you know that little island of Japan just ran ripshod over over China on a regular basis. Yeah. Genghis Khan aside, that's a whole other era. Yeah, uh, very, very much so. So then it's again the what the this one was all right. Let's set up a thing to where uh will you know let down your guard type deal yeah. where Israel gets attacked, right? Mm-hmm. All out of nowhere for no apparent reason whatsoever, you know, big big thing, lots of people die. And then Israel overcorrects with okay, well we're going to we're going to turn the 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 strip into the Gaza strip into some sort of parking lot. And you know there, there's hostages involved and then then it gets uh, tricky because then then it becomes a bluff which is you're what you're laying waste block by block in Gaza, but and and because eventually you you know you want your hostages back, but at the same time and and during this time the hostages are being moved because you're you're taking out blocks city blocks yeah and at the same time you can't take out everything because then you know you're not getting the hostages back. On the other side, though, who are the Hamas, which are really on the on the defensive on this one, you have to give them something or you're going to lose the strip entirely, which you're probably going to lose anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, the hope there was there's a bigger picture. For, so for me, uh, it's not it's not about Israel and Palestine. I mean, I understand, you know, over here we got real problems because, as you know, we've got we've got lots of both. So, you know, you you've got um, a heavy Jewish population and you've got a heavy um uh, Islam population, yes. and and so what are you gonna do? I mean, come on, I, the melting pot gives you all sorts of problems. We went to war with China tomorrow, for example. It's like <laughs> this isn't like Japan in the '40s where we knew where they all were, right? <laughs> There's Chinese everywhere over here. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna do? I, Is that... I, I, and there won't be any internment camps. <laughs> no, there won't. <laughs> No, there won't. I don't even know. I don't even know what you would do. I mean, it would be a big mess, which is why you want to kick off something. The whole the plan was I'm speaking from the the think, you know, we have think tanks over here. And you guys yes. do too. 
but we have we have really expensive think tanks. We spend a lot of money on these guys. And the think tank idea was, okay, you kick off the thing between uh, Israel and, and Palestine, and then you leave the door open to um, uh, for the other Middle Eastern countries to come in and and, and do something there. But the their problem was, and we couldn't we couldn't re- help ourselves. We couldn't resist. Was we parked two of those? Remember the carrier groups I, I mentioned earlier. We yeah. parked two of those off the beach of of freaking Gaza. Yeah. And and one of them is our flagship, the the Gerald Ford. And and it's like no, it, what it, if you had just one out in the distance maybe, but two of them. No, nobody's going against that. It's just you're just not going to do it. I and and so it, the, the the things eventually my prediction because we're not even covering it in the media over here, not really. Um, yeah, I mean we talked about the hostage stuff recently, but uh, the also again I don't want to ruffle feathers, but there's an optics thing to think about here, which is uh, think about who runs the media in America, right? <laughs> oh yes, exactly. Yeah. And you don't want to. Yeah. So if you're taking as much as they'd love to, because, you know, if it bleeds, it leads as much as you want to show the block by block (laughs) destruction of the strip, Mm. you can't because it looks bad. Yeah. Right. It looks. I mean, it's it's, you know, everyone. We all know this. We all seen this in movies, which is everyone likes a good revenge story, but you don't want to rub it in. Right. It's like, fine, you killed the bad guy. Right. You don't want to, you know, desecrate his grave type type deal. And so there. So it's it's not being shown. It's like, okay, so God is just going to be quietly taken out. Demolished. Uh, So I think it's just going to fade away eventually. Uh, It's there's there's nothing yet. There'll be a hostage negotiation, which will take for uh, take a while. And honestly, by the time. They, I mean, it'll segue quite nicely by the time we'll circle back all the way to the beginning. By the time this thing, this whole Israel Gaza thing fades away, because again, nobody in the Middle East is going to do crap. But Iran back down and everybody, everybody else back down. By the time this thing fades away, um, the election process, the American election will be the front and center. And that's it. Everyone will just be watching it again, like it matters. Like people, like if people in Ireland care that, that Trump's going to win the election or, or people in, Freaking Uruguay, they shouldn't. But let, yeah, let me, but, let me, but, let me. But, go ahead. You will, you will have a, a minority. You will have a minority because you got to think about it as well, Mark. You are, you're well traveled. There are a lot of people who are, they see America as, <laughs> as, as the beacon of light, as the, yeah. the home of truth, and stuff's mm-hmm. going wrong mm-hmm. over there. But there's, there's, there's an underground of people who know the truth and they're trying to get things right. And I want to yeah. be aligned with them. And Trump seems to be that guy. So yeah, I'm really interested to see what's going on. If Trump <laughs> goes oh, oh, in, no, I, I, you're, you're right. It is great theater. I mean, I, I am going to be watching it as well because it's, it, you know, we've got the storyline and it's going to be really interesting. However, let me put this in here. Um, the, um, I will put in, in fact, there's a reason why it's got so many freaking hits. The, uh, I will share this, this video with you, uh, and you can watch it at your leisure. I'm sure you've watched it at one point or another, but you're right. There's a uh, Rammstein, you know, the heavy metal group out of Germany. Yes. <clears throat> they did a video called America with a K and it was the, 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 the headline, the, the, the overall arching chorus of it, of it was that America, you know, we're all living in America, you know, no, no matter where you are in the world, because America pushes out, like you just said, the, the beacon everywhere through all yes. the media, everybody knows what America is doing. Everybody wants to know what America is doing. Mm-hmm. It is the, is the shinier version of the Roman empire. Yeah. Not as, not as dominating in my opinion, but we create the illusion, any illusion we want, we create. And, and everyone has to just deal with it, right? You know, the, 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 the video has a wonderful thing. Like we have fast food everywhere and our mm-hmm. television shows are everywhere. And the moon mission was shown everywhere, everywhere, every freaking where it's like, Oh, the Americans went to the moon again. My, my line, which I, I don't know if I said to you last time when I was talking to kids in Sweden, <laughs> and I go, look, I know why Americans believe in the moon mission. Why do you think we went to the moon? And they, everybody says the same thing. It's like, oh, it was on television. 
Yeah. Right? And, and your news would never lie about something like that. That's it's like, it. it's like you don't you don't know us at all. <laughs> I, go, I go, Russia has been calling us the empire of lies for so long. And uh, and they're not wrong. You know, the, in fact, there's a line. I, OK, last part on this, which is there's a there's a there's one line in the, the Romstein video, which is so poetic, which, you, you know, we're all living in America. And it goes and the line is it's Coca-Cola and sometimes war. And it's so true. It's yeah. like, it's like it, it, just to break that down, it's like, don't forget that the Coca-Cola was a cocaine infused caramel, yes. caramel beverage. Yes. Right? That, that we still, by the way, I have an inside track on that. We still put trace amounts of cocaine in it, but it's okay. below the FDA's minimum so it we can is. get away with it. Yeah. Right? And then sometimes war because casually, that's just what we do, right? Because it's profitable. We get 20, 20, 30% return on investment on, uh, on war and ask anybody in, in, in finance to be like 20, 30%. Ooh, I'd want a piece of that action. So yeah, that's <laughs> us. Warmongers, warmongers. We are. We're terrible. We're, we're warmongers that, that put on this white hat and, and again, like you were saying, shine this beacon of light everywhere. It's like, no, we're the good guys. It's like, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Let me just, let me just throw a hundred rocks over there. Oh no, my hands behind my back. It wasn't me. I didn't do that. I can help you. I can help you I sort did. it out. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 and yes, the, the smart people, they'll realize it's like, yeah, colonization in America go, go hand in hand. I mean, you know, we're, we, we are the ultimate UK spinoff first off, yep. mm-hmm. you know, we didn't even, we, but we spin, we spun everything else, you know, like, uh, we didn't win our freedom from, from the UK. It was France. <laughs> We we had to, we had to buy, we had to buy the country back from France <laughs> After, you know, after they, they won the, uh, you know, after they helped us win the, the war over here, and then you guys punished them, took out for the, the French Empire at Waterloo, yeah. Yeah. and then while that was happening, but then you used so many resources, you couldn't, you couldn't take America back. By the way, I love, th- let me throw this out there really quick. I love this little story, which is the, the UK, you know, tried to take America three times. And everybody knows usually the first, it's like, oh, Revolutionary War. But then there's the War of 1812, which we don't yeah. talk about, which is, you know, you guys came in through Canada, came down, burned the White House. And yes. it's like, oh, yeah, we got this. We got this. <laughs> so you would say, all we have to do is take care of Napoleon and we'll be back. Right. Then that's exactly what you did. You went over, took out Napoleon. By the way, I can't wait to see the movie. Um, oh, yeah. And, it looks good. That does, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ridley Scott and, yeah. and uh, Joaquin Phoenix just be brilliant. And it should win. I, I predict it'll be best picture. Um, and then um, I haven't even seen it yet. I, I predict this. So they went over. You take care of Napoleon. But remember, this was back in the day where it takes time to do things, right? It's like, let's go back. Let's take America, right? So you're not dumb. So you don't come in from Canada this time. You come down in through uh, New Orleans. And we stop you at, at New Orleans. You just didn't have the forces. You, you were diminished because you had to fight Napoleon. And, and Andrew Jackson went on the $20 bill because of that. We made this guy president, the guy that you know stopped the British down there. So then it's like, okay. Was, was, that, pre, was that pre-Louisiana Purchase or post? No, that was post. That was okay. post. We, yeah, you're absolutely right. The Louisiana Purchase was when the Revolutionary War ended and France came to us with the bill. <laughs> and they said, <laughs> so you owe us. It's like, what do we owe you? It's like, well, you have to buy the America. But yeah, but we're living it. It doesn't matter. You have to buy it from us. <laughs> so yeah. we yeah. they sold us America, literally sold us the whole freaking country for, a, you know, pen, you know, pennies on the dollar, actually, compared to what it's worth now. Exactly. They didn't. Right? So, but the third one, so, so Britain had one last chance. They weren't going to quit. Are you kidding? You guys, you guys were determined. Why wouldn't you? It's like they, you guys had scoped out this place. It was, it was a freaking gold mine. So the story goes is that, and it's not really a story, it's absolutely true, but no one wants to talk about it, which is, um, you wanted, so the, the whole, the, the whole civil war, the American civil war, that was a British operation, which was, you had the South set up, you, you had all your advisors down there. The entire Southern Navy was built by the British. You look up, look up like the, the CSS Alabama. You know, not only was it was it built in Britain, that's just one example of many ships. Now it was a built in Britain. You left the freaking British cook on, on mm-hmm. board. Right? Mm-hmm. 
everything was ready to go, but it wasn't supposed to be the South versus the North. It was supposed to be the South versus the North, the North versus the South, but the South had the British Navy on, on their, uh, on, yeah. to back them up. And that would have changed everything because they would have blockaded uh, the North and the immigrants couldn't get in. Cause you know, one of the reasons why the North won was they had an endless supply of immigrants came in and they took them off the boat and gave them uniforms and said, go down and we'll get citizenship. Yeah. Come back. yeah. So, the story goes, and I love it. I, I think it's such a great little little thing where um, Lincoln, who was president then, sent a, a, a note off to, uh, I think it was Nicholas. I can't remember if it was the first or second. Nicholas out in uh, Russia. Russia, yeah. He says, um, he says, and, and, and he basically asked him, it's like, keep them out. Keep Britain out. And so Russia contacted Britain, and they said, if you bring in your Navy, we're bringing in our Navy. And Britain just like, oh, screw it, we're done, done, we're out, we're out. And they left the South hanging out to dry, and they they just like, we'll just deal with this in some sort of economic way. And, and yes, and, yes. But that was their that was their only shot. That was their that was their last shot. Had that gone the other way, you know, or hadn't Brit- Britain backed down, oh, it would have been a completely different war. It would have been the First World War, but it would have been in the 1860s. Yes, and it would have been it would have been something. So anyway, that's my. <laughs> I and if know. you think about it, and if you think Go. about it as well, Mark, I mean, look, New York, New York, the city so great they named it twice, named <laughs> after York in England, oh, yeah. aka New York, and then before that, New Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, every every again, people between the whole French side and the and the British side, uh, especially with Britain. I mean, there's a reason why you know English is is as, as our language over here. Um, any anybody in the East Coast that uh, it's like if there's a new in front of anything, right? Mm. It means that there was an older version of it. New Hampshire, New York, New Jersey, yeah. um, all those, all those. In fact, we we were just terrible at naming schemes. Uh, like, look at um, we have a state literally called New Mexico because yes. we took it from old Mexico. Right? Yes. I'm like, really? That's what you're gonna call it? <laughs> El Paso, yes, you know it very well. I've got, I've got an interesting one for you. Yeah. Craig is how we pronounce it in England, but in an American oh. English, y'all say Craig? What's all that about, Mark? Wait, wait, wait. How do you spell it? C-R-A-I-G. Well, we pronounce, oh, I thought, I thought you were going to go a different way. Um, uh. No, we pronounce it Craig. You know, you see, you, see, you accentuate the end part. Eh? Oh, no, no, you want to no, know. I've listened to enough Eddie Izzard over the years. I know the, the, the screw ups that we, that we do. Like, you know, al- we say aluminum, you say al- aluminium. Aluminium, that's it. Um, and, I, and I'm a huge fan of the BBC. So, like, like advertisement versus advertisement. Yes. Uh, roots versus uh, routes. And I don't, I don't swear very often in interviews, but I'm going to swear, I'm going to swear on this one where, cause Eddie Izzard goes, he goes, you call it herbs and we call it herbs because there's a fucking H in it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, it's, and it's like, yeah, that, that, that is absolutely the, the case. We, we, there's all sorts of little things. Um, but then again, you know, we also use different slang, you know, yes. like you, we do the dollar and the buck and you do the, the, the pound and the quid. Yes. Uh, you know, stuff like that. You call truck drivers lorry drivers yes. and all sorts of <laughs> stuff. You know, I've been I've had to learn over the years all sorts of um of course. Or, or field. You call it you you know, we call it a field, you call it the pitch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I still highway, motorway. Mo- highway, motorway, yeah. Luckily, Luckily, the the words are similar enough, and and the the context we we pick up on it pretty quick. But no, I was a big. We have a channel over here called BBC America, and uh, I've I've over the years picked up a lot. <laughs> now, granted, most of it was through Doctor Who and Torchwood, <laughs> and some of the others, but but the general you know the the general dialogue. I know I'm I'm a huge as you know I'm a huge fan of England. I was so so glad to have gone over there a couple times uh, before the pandemic, yeah. and and. The th- again, the third time where I was supposed to go, that was the the most that was the most foreshadowing I ever had. Where I was leaving London, gonna fly back to Seattle, and uh, back in um, uh, woof, was either I think it was January of 2020, 
and a, a woman walks up to me with a clipboard and she asked me if I'd been to China in the last couple of weeks. Mm. And I was like, what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I, and then I, I get home and I'm supposed to do an endorsement over in London um, in March of 2020. And all of a sudden I get a phone call. It's like, yeah, by the way, the borders are closing. So you're not coming over here. It's like, what? Uh, I love, I love UK. Uh, the only place I did, I got, I get to go to Ireland. I covered most of the island. I did not get to go to Scotland, but uh, no, I love, I love everything. that's UK. Lo- I, I have learned over the last 10 years uh, to appreciate the UK more and more. So. Yes, and I recommend it to all the all of the Americans to just get your bloody passport out. I know it's tr- yeah. it can be tr- challenging, especially financially. It's not as cheap to get a passport in America versus England, but you open yourself up to so many different things. And look, you know, England is the home of America, and it's not. It is. You know, oh, it's on. absolutely. We yeah, America doesn't happen without England. Absolutely does not happen. Uh, it is, it is our, it is our legacy. And, and, and by the way, I, I know we got to wind this thing down, but I love the fact that, you know, cause I go to uh, bbc.com on a regular basis. And I love the fact that so many stories are American. And the I reason know. is, is because we are the absolute, we are the crazy cousin. Yes. You don't know what the hell it's like. You know, America, uh, British compared to us, you guys are so more, uh, composed, so much you know everything you know just so quite right you know yeah. and and but over here it's still there's still parts of this place that are the wild west wild and, wild west that's exactly how i was going to describe it it's like anything it's like almost the way i describe it it's yeah. brains of the beast the uk america the belly of the beast but also america is almost like the experiments like let's try yeah. it here first Let's see yeah. how it works here. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. That we don't have we don't have filters as much. I mean, we yeah. You looked and see if if it works here. There's we steal you know each other's television shows and media ideas constantly. Um, but uh, you know, again, we used to put cocaine in soda. Um, we used to sell morphine at the drugstore. And yeah. uh, as I remind people, I go look back and as back in the 30s right you know i've got relatives that i think was were you know just passed away recently back in the 30s you could go to a, a hardware store and buy a hammer and a machine gun at the same time there were no gun stores you just went <laughs> it's just like oh yeah what do you need the machine gun for no idea we just did it i'll just i'll just have it i'll have it give it me yeah i'll, I'll go to the pharmacist and yes i'll have um give me three ounces of the opium <laughs> exactly four grams you, of the heroin and hey, um do you, do you want that in liquid or powder <laughs> <laughs> and and again we 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 take it too far and then we only roll it back as far as we need to right mm. where it's like and to where now the pharmaceuticals of course are selling just about you know stuff that's way more addictive by comparison, but yeah, we are we are nutty. So yes, I appreciate the fact that you guys use us, I, and I, and actually, I think it strengthens Britain because you run our stories, and it's kind of like a warning, a cautionary yes. tale. Yes, <laughs> it's like by the way, don't let this happen to you, because I'm sure in the pubs those discussions, like you know what I heard, I, what happened in America this week. You never guess what, Dave. <laughs> 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 yeah yep, we are yeah so anyway thank you for that thank you for helping uh helping make us what we are it's really, <laughs> really. you're welcome sir you're most welcome it's and look it's you, I, I, from another standpoint my last yeah. point on this yeah i also i almost kind of think that you know if this was the new world remember so you know yeah. britain predominantly sent the bandits the criminals you know the religious sellites all the rest of it over here but i yeah. think they they thought let's let's just send a few agents over there as well because i, I think they might be onto something you know <laughs> <laughs> let's oh try. i i i am sure every british intelligence group since since it was they were founded has been over here in one form or another, keeping, you know, keeping tabs on us and, you know, seeing what we're up to and, and, uh, what, again, what works and what doesn't. And yes, guiding and, uh, in certain ways, etc. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, come on. We, yeah. I, the, the, the crown, it's not like the crown doesn't have influence. And, and by the way, I'm sorry. My, my last point is I love, you know, cause the Olympics are going to come up here pretty soon. I think next year is an Olympic year. Um, 
where uh, you know people talk about oh who's got the medal winner and who has the medal. You know who? No, you know who has the most medals every freaking year is or every time it happens is the crown. It's like yeah, yeah you you. And I'm not talking about we're talking just the crown in general. We're talking yes. about um, if you combine Britain with yeah. Australia, yeah. with Canada, with yeah. let's throw in New Zealand just for the heck of it. Um, uh, the Commonwealth states. Let's throw the Commonwealth states in there as well. Jeff, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. I mean, and then and again, and then you throw in the American spinoff. You know, there's no there's no contest. No, the crown the crown is still you know front and center in a lot of a lot of places. So. Very good point. Dominant force behind all the scenes. It's, yes. it's always with and 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 you say the crown. Obviously, it was the queen for so many years, and now it's we've got pr the prince who's now turned a king. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah. We'll see how where that goes. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm interested. I'm very interested to see the new um, currency. Because as a, as a as a currency collector myself, I am yeah. you know that's going to be added to the as soon as the first notes are, are released, that will be going straight into the vaults. <laughs> nice, nice, it's awesome. Well, thank you. It was it was a pleasure talking to you. Um, I hopefully uh you know uh you get a hold of this um uh, neo human guy Christian. I'd I'd love for you to it, he he might I don't think he's ever done an interview uh audio interview. I think he'd be fun to talk to. Excellent. I most definitely, I most definitely will follow up, um, and I will make sure I put the links below down in the description. If you haven't heard of Mark Sargent, which you, I'm sure you have heard of, ah. go and check out the his, go back to the, the the origin and go to his compilation. You still got it up on? Oh yeah, that's it's, it's yeah. It's I couldn't I couldn't pull it down if I wanted to. Yeah, go sure. back and just start there, and then work your way through the myriad of interviews and videos mark is a staple and i thank you very much for for carving out time um to have these open dialogues um sometimes it's not always about that specific topic because i think nah <laughs> you know i think we uh, but it's we've... okay i mean I've, I've been doing this for eight years and and if you guys want to learn more about flat earth by all means just type in type in flat earth mark into any search engine you'll you'll find the rabbit hole that gets to my stuff eventually most definitely most definitely yes it has been fun sir it has been fun and i will make sure yeah, it's not going to be a year next time <laughs> yeah awesome well if anything comes up let, let me know drop me a line okay most definitely and if you um send me the information to uh, reference the what was his name again oh neil i've already oh neil. yeah I'll, I'll send you i'll send you his email address yeah, and I'll, I'll make contact, and then um, we will get it sorted, sir. We shall get it sorted. Uh, I have, I have also um, suggested you for a to go onto tinfoil hats. Oh, cool! Yeah, happy for, to do it. For some reason, I don't know why they haven't reached out to you. I, 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 and when, you. whenever, I just roll with it. The universe unfolds the way that it should. Oh, it does, and the reason why is because your name was brought up. Um, that Hibbler character. You know that aggressive flat earther. Oh, Sean Hibbler. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Well, yeah, Sean. Sean doesn't fully trust me yet, but that's fine. That that's a that's a work yeah. in pro progress. Lots of people but, still think that I work for the government. It's like, all right, that's fine. Yeah, I, I mean, I can understand a little to have a bit oh, of skepticism. No. I, I get it. it. I, I get it. I, look, it's the truther community. I'd be if everyone just just listened to what I had to say blindly. I'd be surprised. So no, mm. I, and and Sean Hibbler, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's also an Eric Dubay guy. And and yes. you talk to you know, look Eric Dubay's people. <laughs> I know. I he know. always the same thing. Like, Don't trust Mark. It's like, what, dude. It's like you're in freaking yeah. Thailand. We've never met. Yeah, that's is he is Derek still around then? Is he still making content and yep, stuff? Yeah, yeah, he's still. I we uh, no, his followers are or sorry, let's say listeners. Uh, his listeners are extremely loyal. Uh, you know, his channel's been burned down a couple times and it's still back up. So no, yeah, he's back back yeah. on the old YouTube or is he on the alternate? No, no, he's still on YouTube. You can type him in right now. He's I think he's got like a hundred ninety thousand subs. Big. How is he still on YouTube? I thought they took the channel down. <laughs> Well, they have, but you can re you can re you can create a brand new YouTube channel. They don't care if you reapply; they could just burn it down. They can't uh, they can't ban you. They'll they'll they'll, they'll forbid you from. All you have to do is create a new email address. Uh, so it's like you know doing a Gmail account. So yeah. they 
no, they can't stop you from creating a new account on YouTube. All they can do is destroy your channel once they're up. No, but he's kept this one up for a while. He's he's playing by the rules now, so he's fine. Okay, okay, but we'll see. I'll, I'll... And and don't worry about Hibbler. He, Sean, look, I I talked to Sean before. Sean's a good guy. I got no problem yeah. with Sean. Uh, if, if he hasn't trust me yet, that's fine. Look, I went to the conference in Vegas and there were still people that are walking up to me squinting and it's like, come on. Is that I, you really you, Mark? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, look, I, you know, I, I don't, I've never come off in my opinion as an agent. I don't have agent hair. I don't have that agent jawline. So whatever. Uh, definitely not. Hey, and lastly, I've totally forgot. I, I should have mentioned this when we was talking um, before. Yeah. How is Miss Patricia doing? Are you still in contact? <laughs> That's how you want to end this. Uh, oh no 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 no! This is offline. Talk. No, no, this is Patricia, offline. No, this is offline. She's been, she's been she, and I, she and I bumped into each other in a chat room uh, the other day. One of Karen's, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, she's still doing her thing. Um, she is not as active in, definitely not as active in the flatters community, uh, mostly because of the whole Antonio deal yeah. from from some years ago. But look, he he died. So oh, what? Yeah, yeah, he got he got throat cancer and and just died. So I would have thought there would have been some closure there, but you know, she it's gonna. It, I don't know. Yeah. We will see what it will take to to get her back into the fray. I love her to come back into the fray. I still think she was she was did one of the, my my favorite interviews of all time with CBS. Oh yeah. Um, uh, and, and her tone, she, her personality. She was, and she doesn't necessarily need to talk about anything flat Earth related. As you, you know, you don't necessarily stick to that topic and that genre. Yeah. I mean, every it's, producer loved her, absolutely loved her, and uh, I never had a producer say a bad thing about her uh, in 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 my life. Uh, yeah. So she could show up at any flat Earth event, and she'd be welcome back with with I've, open arms. I've, I can only imagine. Well, when you if you do, and when you, well, not if when you do, send them my send them my um, my love and my regards. I will, I will. No problem at all, sir. Well, I've got I've got to um, go fill up the vehicle, <laughs> as you as you would say, rather than the car with some petrol. There you go. There you no, go. no, some diesel with, with actually. Petrol. Yeah. No, 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 go. diesel. This is the diesel vehicle, so I'll be putting some diesel in it, and because I'm I'm going to the airport tomorrow, airport sale, so to get some perfume and aftershaves and stuff, discounted prices and all, you know. Nice, nice. I hear you. I hear you. Not, yeah. not, not gonna go to the pub for some uh, ah, chips, ah, chips and a pint. Chips and a pint. No, no. You know me. I, I smoke. I smoke. I don't really drink like that. So no, <laughs> no, no pubs for me, sir. No pubs for me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, you have a you have a good night, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Indeed, sir. You take care, Mark. All right. Have a good one. Indeed, sir. Take care. Bye.